Weezy is going to serve as our Robert for this week since Robert is not here. Thank you, Weezy. Thank you. And she's she's been wanting to be on a podcast for a while outside of her barks. And I was just like, you know what? Robert's not here today. He's your favorite person. So you can fill in as Robert. So you're gonna have to edit video, Weezy. I'm not feeling super confident in that, but um, it's episode 431 of Pass the Gravy, and it's just Alex and Pat here. We are recording a little bit earlier in the week than we usually do, but uh, we'll get to why we're doing that in a little bit. Um, but Bobby jokes was just, you know, he had something come up. And so I understand that we changed the schedule up. That's on us. But uh, I think just just the two boys here are going to get it done. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Pat, would you like to start off the pre-come segment? I would, and I'm going to start it off with, uh, I, I think Robert's lying. I think he I think just didn't want to do the pod. I think he skipped out on the pod today because Alex O tweeted in, since my birthday is tomorrow and this week's episode of PTG is being recorded early, can I request an early birthday gift? Basically, all I want for my birthday is Robert to sing me happy birthday. I think Robert Ooh. skipped just because he didn't want to sing. I did not see that tweet. Yeah. But that is this morning. that makes you think, makes you wonder. I mean, and 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 Robert's gonna have to partially like deal with this podcast anyways because he's gonna have to edit it. So Robert, I mean, like you not being here today doesn't mean you can't record a video of you singing happy birthday. So we don't birthday shame, although I think Alex O tried to birthday shame Sam a little bit on um, That's true. on a recent study suggests because there was no episode on Monday. But happy Belated birthday to Sam. Happy early birthday to Alex. Oh, and Robert, I think you should probably make a video of you singing happy birthday. So everybody make it's sure you the, tag Robert and demand thing. it. Tag Robert and demand it at Robert Barbosa03. Say we demand to see Alex O's birthday video. Yeah. Um, he'll, know what, he'll know what you mean. Or he won't, that was just figure my, it out. My conspiracy theory for the episode today. Uh, by the way, I, this morning I just had this like half awkward, half just weird interaction with one of the servers. He walks up to me and goes, hey, did you see the game? What game? There were two on last night. Uh, and he goes, Sunday. <laughs> I go, which one? He goes, Ravens. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> where are you going with <laughs> Like, You're going to have to be more specific. At what point was I supposed to just, why would I just know exactly? Hey, did you see the game two days ago? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he just said it like so nonchalantly. Like, of course, he's going to know exactly what I'm that talking makes about. It, that makes it seem like, uh, like with Ferris Bueller's day off where he's like, what's the score? And there was the, the Cubs game. And he's like, zero, zero. He's like, who's winning? And the guy's like, the Bears. Where it's just like, you try and be like, what? What, 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 how, how'd you guys, uh, what'd you guys think of the game last night? And it was like, what, there was no game on. And you're like, ah, uh, ah, uh, like, like, Ravens. Granted, he's, yeah, he, like, he just thought of the first football team he could think of. I was like, Ravens, did you watch Rock, oh, no. the Ravens? He is a fan of the Ravens, but when you say, hey, did you see the game? 99% of the time, you're talking about last night, or and yeah, last yeah. night was Monday Night Football and the Astros. So, like, to just be like, yeah, did you see the game? No, I'm talking about 48 hours ago. It was 15 games ago. Let's start doing that, though. Like, yo, did you see the game? No, remember, like, 07? Remember 07? The Giants <laughs> beat the Patriots, the Super Bowl, they went to beat. That was great, right? That was a great game. Like, that was, uh, like, over a decade ago, man. What? It just no, blew no, my mind. It? Remember that game? He, like, said it to me as I was walking by him. So, I kind of, like, half stopped and half kept walking. But then when he goes Ravens, I was like, I mean, kind of. And then just like walked away. I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to say to this? You were just frustrated at that point. Like, I have nothing else to re- actually no retort to this. Ac- actually, I believe what I said was because I, I had it on my laptop and I was watching three other games at the same time. I believe I said was, I mean, yeah, side to side, which doesn't make sense as a response. But like I was thinking my head was going to. But mm. his whole line of questioning just fucking put my brain in such a pretzel that I couldn't, I couldn't come up with a response to him. Well, I mean, I at, that point, at that point, you can always just be like trying to confuse him back. Like he confused you. So you just be like, well, side to side. 
you know, side to side. I should have just been like, yeah, against the Browns, right? Like, just start naming teams that they didn't play. Against the, the Indians. <laughs> it's a hell of a baseball game. Love, love hoop. <laughs> Can't believe they lost. They won by like wow. 30 points. Yeah, I'm not a big rugby guy, but I, I couldn't keep my eyes off the screen. <laughs> I like, I'm, I'm happy I was already walking away because I was walking to do something because otherwise I would have just turned ra- or, like, around and walked away from him and it would have just been a weird way to start the day. Like, this is before but, we even But opened. a funny way and a memorable way for him, he'll just be, I, I one time Pat was so upset about the Ravens game, he just stormed off. I was there. At I mean, I saw like, his PTG picks, but I didn't think he was that upset. God, it was so bad. I, I think I was only at work at like five to ten minutes most at this point when he <laughs> dropped this on me, and it just – it fucked my day up. It fucked up my brain completely. Just Yeah, it sets a bad tone for the remainder of the day. <laughs> so uh, – and now I'm here doing this, so <laughs> – how about let's that? hope I turn it around. Let's let's really hope so. Um, I I was uh, bringing to the table. I brought quite a few things. I'll get to my ideas here in just a little bit. But I saw somebody was talking about their birthday bash. They're throwing a birthday bash. And uh, I that just made that made me think like there's all kinds of names you can call parties and stuff. But like bash seems like the most try hard. This isn't going to be fun. One like it seems like like you forced. Like, hey, no, it's going to be a wacky, wild party. Like, you're, it's, it's going to be a bash. Like, Fest sounds cooler. Palooza is my, probably my personal favorite. Um, extravaganza, a blowout also sounds cool. All of those sound better than bash. Like, Alex's birthday bash sounds just dumb. Spooktacular, obviously, is a, maybe that's my favorite one. Okay, so by, fa- by uh, de facto, that has to be my favorite. Tacular. Throwing that on a spectacular, spooktacular, spectacular, anything like that. It sounds cooler than Bash, right? Uh, yeah, Bash, bash sounds is like, like a try hard move. You're like trying to convince me, and I don't buy it. If somebody has a birthday bash, my first question is going to be, What's the cover? Because you're definitely like going to try and charge a cover charge to your birthday because you're renting oh, yeah. out like machines and probably like some musical act that nobody wants to fucking see anyway, but you want to have a dope party, but also nobody's going to throw you a dope party and you don't want to spend all this money on yourself for your birthday. Yeah. No, I'm not going to any bashes. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I did have to pay a cover charge to go to a restaurant. Quick shot to Kobo's Q just opened an Edo. Um, Best meal. God, I wanted to go. Best meal of my fucking life, dude. I had brisket, mac, and cheese quesadillas. And it was amazing. It was amazing. And their birria tacos. I did not realize that it was pronounced birria. Or birria. What, I, I, I'm going to fuck it up anyways, no matter how I say it. But it's birria, not birria, is what I thought it was. And uh, yeah, Kobo's Q. It's like East Downtown. It's going to be the new uh, Lucky's Pub. If you know where Minute Maid is, like Lucky's Pub closed, this is going to be the new like Lucky's Pub pre and post game spot for Astros and Rockets games. But uh, shout out to Kobo's Q for uh, hooking it up. There was a $20 cover because like they opened and they had, it was a BYOB. They don't have their liquor license. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to pay $20. And uh, I don't want to name names, but a friend of mine was like, oh, I'm not paying cover to go eat food. And I was like, all right, idiot. Like way to miss out on like the best restaurant ever. So yeah, pay cover if it's for Kobo's Q. I'll, I'll, I'll vouch for that. And it's just, those dudes are so ingrained into like Astros Twitter. So like, if you're not a Twitter person, I could get like not getting what's going on, but like, there's such a big part of like the Astros community and being there. And then there, I think there was a game. Was there a game that day? Friday. Yeah. It was yeah. game one. And it was just, God, I wish I could have gone so bad. And from everything I've ever heard, is the, it like, you know, just dynamite barbecue on top of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I've never been able to get up there. It always sells out in like a minute. Yeah. So finally was able to get there and uh, it lives up to the hype. A lot of times when a place is hyped up that much, like it doesn't live up to it. That was, it exceeded the hype. It was incredible, but it's awesome. Shout out Kobo's Q. Um, I'm not getting paid to say that or anything. I just like, that was some bomb ass food, but um, good dudes. But bash, like bash as a party name. It just seems like you're trying too hard to convince me. I think, you know, like, like truck places, car places are like, save a thon toyota thon like that sounds cooler than bash the only bash i would go to is if it was a bash bash and it was everybody dressed up as wait you know what no i'm dumb yeah okay. just right away i was thinking yes in my head super 
I was thinking Super Bash Brothers. And I was like, no, it's Super Smash Brothers. Once again, Pat's brain is done. I, bl- I, you know, I blame it- my server. I got a new dumb server that fucked my head okay. up. We got rid of the old one, and now he's fucking... No, I'm just kidding. He's not dumb. But he I fucked my head up. I find a way of just kind of, you know, replacing itself over and over again. But I, I, what if it was a Super Smash Bash? That sounds cool. I'm sure there's that instances where Bash plays. But to me... Bash doesn't sound as cool as Palooza or Fest or Blowout or Extravaganza or Spectacular or Spooktacular. Like it just, it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But that, no, you're 100 you know, right. I got an invite to go to a birthday bash, and was just like decline. I didn't hit decline. You I just thought, respond. With I thought what's I, the cover. I gave it a maybe. Where that's means gonna... you're not going. Maybe always means you're not going. That's all. That's got to be one of the most frustrating things about sending out those invites is everybody's going to select maybe and you have no idea who's coming. But also, if you have to send invites, that's kind of a problem in and of itself. Like, you should just be able to text everyone that you want. Well, that's why, like, when we do Pass the Gravy events, when we do our Christmas spooktacular every year, I make the event and then I send to like everybody that I'm friends with and hopefully they can do it. But then it's like a lot of people like hit maybe and stuff like that. And it's like, I don't get mad. Oh, well, no, no, no. That's come at that point. But that's, that's more a like just a, I'm it's a public like, open thing, you know? Yeah, if it was I'm just a get together like with us birthday. and our friends, yeah. Like if, 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 if it's for your birthday and you're sending out the evite on Facebook, first of all, there's going to be a lot of people probably on the evite that you don't want there in the first place. Second of all, if you're just invent, inviting people to your birthday that you don't even have their number, yeah, I don't think you want them at your birthday. That's weird. I mean, unless like they got a new number or shit, but like you probably get your friend's number if they get a new or number. Unless, so. Or if you're trying to bang them, you know, that's another that acceptable too. one. Which we are all for as long as it's consensual, fellas and ladies. Bang bash. Team consensual, bang bash, which is just. You, it's an orgy. You know, you know what it is. It's an orgy with a cover charge. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ba- bash just means cover charge. Yeah. Good call on that. I didn't even think about the cover charge part, but you're right. That does sound like I got to pay a cover charge. Uh, I had some other things. Uh, spooky season around the corner. I mean, it is spooky season. We're in the height of it. Halloween around the corner is what I meant. But vampires, you know, they're uh, a lot of people are afraid of them. And I understand it. Like, they, they bite you. They suck your blood. What about if vampires just could, like, eat leeches? You know, leeches suck blood. I think vampires would be less intimidating to a lot of people. They're always like, well, I have to feed. I've got to feed. Bro, just get some leeches and fuck those up. Yeah, but the leeches have to feed first. Oh, do they? And then we probably have leeches. vampire leeches. Like, then Ooh, you'd have leeches sad. that could turn like, you into vampires. Shit. Yeah, I know. That's a bad idea. Just let vamps do their own thing, man. Let them feed yeah, when they got to feed. No, that, fuck, dude, that really backfired. I, I didn't think that went through at all. See, that's why sometimes I feel like I got to throw these ideas out there. And like, you know, you'll, you'll shoot them down. That one was deservedly shot down. That would be fucking terrifying. Like baby, like little, like tiny, tiny little vampire leeches that could fuck you up. Uh, uh-uh, no, thank you. Mm, Cause at least a vampire, even when they sneak up on you, you might have time to struggle and get away from them. A leech, you're just swimming. And then, oh no, you get out of the water. And now I'm a vampire. And that's just over. Yeah. It's over from there. That would it's be shit. even more horrifying than just vampires. Anytime you go skinny dipping at night, bam, you could become a vampire. It's in the ocean at all, even. I guess they're more they're mostly in marshes, I would imagine. Yeah. Swamps. At least with ponds. vampires, you're just like, I won't go out at night. Leeches. You just carry a little garlic whatever. and some silver with you. You never know. I mean, my garlic content in my bloodstream is probably high enough to at all times to just keep vampires. You still get bit though, and they just yeah, yeah, gross. Yeah, but the garlic would kill the vampiral infection. Okay. I think I said that right. You yeah, vampir- vampiric infection. But vampiric I like vamp- infection. I like that. Vampiral. Better. It sounds more like viral. Yeah, I did say vampiral. I like that because it is a viral vampiral infection. Is what we're gonna go with in this instance. I I'm gonna allow that one. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I'm a big fan of it. So crossing that off, vampire leeches. No, that's a no from us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, ooh, are harpoon guns water guns? You use them to like shoot stuff in the ocean. They are used in the water. Therefore, I think we could classify them as water guns. 
not pro killing whales or anything here. I gotta go. I'm no. just thinking about it. A harpoon gun is and largely from what I've seen on television and film has been used in the ocean or on the water. They're used near water. I think for it to be a water gun, water has to be part of the process in some way. You have to be on the water to use it. You don't have to be on the water to use it. You're a, a shooting harpoon. something in the water. I've seen plenty of it, uh, movies and stuff where they use harpoons on dry land. Malibu's Most Wanted? Yep. That's there you the go. First, so I don't know why that's that the water first gun. one. But I think that's we should right. consider it. I, I, I get it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on the side of no on this one. I don't think it counts. Are they water gun adjacent? No, I think they're just so. used. They're just mainly used near water. I feel like a harpoon gun is like a water gun's cooler cousin. No, a water gun's cooler cousin is a water cannon. One of those big bastards that they'll. But that's still a water gun, right? A yeah, water cannon is still it, a water gun. But it's a cannon. Actually, no, it's a cannon. It's not a gun. Would you say I mean, it's an like actual... type a type of a gun? It's just Would like you... an old time. No, gun. it's artillery. It's water artillery. Because you wouldn't say an actual cannon is a gun. No, it's a fucking cannon. I think I would um, consider cannons like in the gun category. Uh, weapon category, not gun category. I mean, it shoots. So does my dick. Doesn't make it a gun. Well, I mean, I guess if you want to, if you want to look at it that way, not with that attitude, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm just saying. I, like, I don't like know. I, said, I, I feel I like the harpoon the gun is the gun that shows up at like a water gun family function. It's smoking cigarettes. You're like, dude, this guy, this guy, look at this dude over here. He's out here fucking slicing through whales or whatever else you shoot with a harpoon gun. And yeah, this guy is a badass out there. We're well, we're just getting, but we're just squirting all around the backyard. It's uh, it's out there, you know, doing the Lord's work. Hunting. I think I think it's more of the neighbor to the water gun. Like, yeah, they're near each other and they interact from time to time, but it's not, you know, they're not part of the family. Could it be a stepbrother? I'm going to stick with neighbor. I think the neighbor analogy was real good. Well, I guess we're going to have to agree to disagree on this one. I feel like water, I feel like a harpoon is under the water gun category, but who knows? We don't have Robert here to break the tie. Right. But I I feel like he would have break Robert. the tie in my favor if he was here. So That's probably true. a good thing. I, I do we can't rule it out arguments. now. We can't rule it out now. Um, on to my ideas. An Italian Chinese restaurant. All right. Just just we'll work on names in a little bit. What if we started an Italian Chinese fusion restaurant, but all it was was just spaghetti that we serve with chopsticks. Like to cut the cost of overhead, it's just we buy a lot of chopsticks, buy a bunch of noodles, buy a bunch of spaghetti sauce, done. Like, what would you like? It's like, you know, raising canes is pretty simple. It's like, do you want chicken fingers? One, two, three, or do you want the bun with the sandwich? All right, good, here you go. In and out, like you get three things on the menu. Us, it would just be, do you want spaghetti with meat sauce or not with meat sauce? We could also, I guess, offer buttered noodles, but then- We, we, get, we can do shrimp. Shrimp parmesan? Nope, we're getting that, we're getting out of hand with that, dude. No, we're no, cutting, no. We're as low budget as you can be, dude. Spaghetti only with the spaghetti. No, I, no, I'm just thinking up Italian dishes that we can eat with chopsticks. You can definitely do shrimp parmesan. It's the size. Each shrimp is you know only the size of a shrimp. I guess is the easiest way to say it. You can eat that with chopsticks, and you got all your pasta underneath it that you're eating with your chopsticks. Boom. Why don't Italians embrace? chopsticks as much you'd think they would uh they got a lot of hearty meals that you can't do with chopsticks like an actual chicken parmesan be very difficult with chopsticks but spaghetti should just be we should just start using Me meatballs depending on the size of them could be a problem for chopsticks no stab it dude now a nice bolognese you could do that with chopsticks if you have a meatball that's too big to like grab with a chopstick, you stab it and you eat it. It's like a, a meatball on a stick. I think that I do, the Italians I do like are, meat on sticks. I think the Italians are missing the boat on this. And that's like, boom, fair food right there. Uh, it's a fried meatball on a chopstick. Done. But here's the thing. If you try and tell Italians anything about their own food and how you could improve it, they won't listen to you. 
That's why, I mean, what we can think that that's why we open up our own joint that just serves spaghetti and just has chopsticks. So like, can I get, can I get a spoon? You're like, no, we don't have spoons. We exclusively have chopsticks. Like that's it. Even if you get like the gelato at the end of the, the meal or whatever the Benihana ice cream is, I don't know. Um, but whatever you, you're like dessert, if you get that, it's just like, sorry, you got to eat with the chopsticks. Sorry, my bad. I think I can get behind this. A orange chicken pasta dish. Italian Chinese fusion. We like it's probably already a thing, but just straight up eating spaghetti with chopsticks would look weird at first. But I think there's some legs there, and I think we could start a new trend. I am one hundred percent on board with this. What are the kids on TikTok doing? Like, start eating spaghetti with chopsticks. Make that a thing. Right, so you you. You brought in TikTok and I'm out now. No, but you get the TikTok kids to do it and then it starts to be cool. You no. Know? Like that's how it works. No, I, 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 I don't want to be a part of anything TikTok. I don't want to dance on top of uh, retired numbers of former NFL players that are dead. That's a very specific reference. Yeah, Jackson Mahomes. He can go fuck himself. Right. I, I think it, we're jumping around here, but yeah, for those of you that don't know, Jackson Mahomes is the younger brother of Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is great. Jackson Mahomes is a gigantic waist of a six foot seven body or whatever the fuck he is. He's a nerd thing to say. Yeah. I hate everything that there is and ever will be about Jackson Mahomes. He's a piece of shit. Uh, For some reason, he's famous on TikTok and he can't dance. If you've ever actually seen any of his dances, they're not good. He's not good at this. All he does is annoy people and go to his brother's games and be a piece of shit. And he went to the game this weekend they retired Sean, uh, Sean Taylor's number, and he went into a carted off area, a roped off area, and did a dance on top of the number. Fuck him. I, I, I told my buddies, this is what needs to happen. Patrick Mahomes needs to go full Aaron Rodgers and just cut his brother out of his life. I don't really care what the Mahomes do, honestly. I do, because Patrick has a great name that he needs to carry on. And we can't have a Jackson in here just fucking it up. Name a good Jackson. Um, the guy that won Big Brother besides some of the stuff. But, he said. but is he good? Like Big Brother that, player. That's what I would say. He, he won for me, but I don't think he's actually a good guy. Jet Jackson. Okay, you got me there. I was also thinking Deshaun Jackson. He's pretty good. Jackson Pollock. I uh, see. I think art is stupid. So I don't know. I mean, I don't. I think that his name is Jackson Pollock. It is. It is. He lost Stephen Jackson. Stephen Jackson was good. Damn it. Okay. But those guys are retired. Name a current Jackson. Can't do it. Mm-hmm. The name has gone sour. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair argument right there. I feel like if I looked it up, I could find a couple, but I'm not going Probably. To. I'm I mean, not Deshaun Jackson to. is current too. But either way, Jackson Mahomes, piece of shit. We disavow him on this podcast. But but back to our original point, I think that Italians are really missing the boat on not including chopsticks and what they're doing. And while we're on the topic of chopsticks, just one more idea to improve chopsticks. What if you just had like hollowed out chopsticks that were also straws? Yeah, that could work. Right? Like environmental friendly. Come on. You can use them for you know- two things. I don't want the pasta. I'm on a low carb. Just give me the marinara and I'll sieve it through a straw. Right? I mean. It's doable. So at our Asian Italian fusion restaurant that only uses chopsticks, we're going to have hollowed out chopsticks. So you can spaggetti use egg rolls. straws. That sounds egg pretty rolls tight. Filled with spaghetti. That sounds pretty tight. And another idea that I've seen online is you just freeze a bunch of spaghetti and then you just throw it in the pan and then you just turn it on and it's like done. Like that's all you gotta do. So it's just ready to go frozen spaghetti and warm that bad boy up. I mean, you don't even need to freeze it. Just have some spaghetti and some marinara in your fridge at all times. When you want it, scoop a little of each into a pan and heat it up. I mean, we'd have a restaurant, so we could just do that. So yeah. Yeah. I think this restaurant's gonna go all over well. I'm feeling good about it. Yeet. Um, next idea that I had, really the only other idea I had this this week was um we should get a light bulb that like I have I have these they're called U light bulbs and I can turn them on from my phone. You can like set them up 
if you have a schedule like to come on at a certain time i don't know how to do that but i know that that's a possibility like if you have the ones that have different colors on them you can change the colors we have some behind my tv but we should make a light bulb that goes along with an app that just tells you how more times you can turn it on before it goes out because it's always like you're like what the fuck why like i wish i would know i had two more turns on of this light bulb before like i need it in the morning it's it's like the only light in my hallway and then i just got to kind of get dressed in the dark yeah but if you ever if it was you know when to wrong, restock if it was ever wrong you'd flip out like but if the bulb them, ever burned out undershoot early, what it is to get you to keep buying but if the bulb ever burned out early you'd be like what the fuck i have this product to avoid this like say you have an electrical surge and it just fucking it blows the ball, but happens. You'd be like, this is bullshit. I want my money back. But also, if we made a bulb like that, that like from our end, it's not e- like we could just buy light bulbs, scratch off whatever the brand is, put past the gravy on it, and just tell people it goes with that. And then there's just you sitting behind a computer like, that gets you 7,000 ons. And when they go out, like, sorry, like, where's the disclaimer at the bottom of the box? May not actually show how many times you can turn a light on and off. But Numbers are just suggestions. It. Right. It's like a speed limit. It's just a suggestion. Like it's a, this is a gag gift. I think they're like, I would buy lights if I knew how many more uses I got out of it. God oh, damn it. Sorry, I can't stop yawning right now. Uh, no, I don't think I would. They're lights. Just oh, I'm stairs. dumb. All you have to do is be like, See how many times you can turn it on and off before you need to restock. And I'd be like, uh, okay. And I would get that one because I don't know shit about light bulbs. But if they had one that said that on the box, I'm buying that one. You charge a dollar more. I think I'm getting something cool. You download the app. Your app sales spike. And I think that's how we get rich here, Pat. This light above me, it's got four things for it. It's a little hanging light type thing. It's, it hasn't had more than one bulb in it at a time for like three years. That was how our bathroom was. We have four of those like that point up. And just recently it got down to one. And I was like, it's kind of getting dark in here. And so we we bought some more and restocked them. But well, this I mean, this gives off plenty of light. You don't need four in there. And I've got spares just sitting in a drawer somewhere. So when this goes out, this bulb, then I'll use one of the other eight that came in the pack. And it'll last me four more fucking years. It's very simple. I mean, I guess you can have more light. I don't need more light. This is plenty of light. I guess I I can see see everything in this room. Right. The studio lighting would look a little better, probably. Well, I mean, I'm not going to install a ring light or anything like that. You could buy a ring light. We've already looked at how cheap they are. I could. And I probably should. Or a microphone, also, which again, you still haven't really done any of that. You bought a computer, but you bought the like cheapest one you could find. The second that I buy these things, Robert's gonna be like, "Okay, guys, I'm." I don't know why that's Robert's voice, but he's gonna be like, "All right, I'm ready to go live again, guys." But then, in the event that we have to go back to video for any reason at all, maybe it's just convenience or something like that, I think that it might be worth it long term for Big Brother that's podcasts. True. I should just go to fucking Best Buy later and buy that shit. I was like, I should just buy it online, but I'm like, I'm sure Best Buy has all of this equipment. Right, but you don't have to go anywhere if you get it online. Yeah, but then I also don't have to wait for it. Like, what if I buy it and it's not here by next week? That would suck. Well, then you just deal with the same thing you've already had for one more no. week. See, there's so many ifs that I can't go through on any of them. I can, I can see that here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. This is well established, Alex. All right. Well, you said it, not me. You said I mean, it. Not, uh, I, I wear it like a badge of honor. I'm going to wear a scarlet, or not a scarlet, I'm going to wear a brown S on my clothes from now on. Like the scarlet A. It's going to be a brown piece of shit. It seems like it would be stinky, but. I'm, it's it not going to be actual shit. Well, it should be a brown S. Wear it with pride. Yeah. You don't wear it with pride. You wear it with shame. That's what you're supposed to wear it with. I'm not ashamed of how much of a piece of shit I am, though. Okay. Well, I then mean, wear I, it with pride, bro. Against everything that I probably should believe, I kind of like me. Or it could stand for scumbag. 
No, see, scumbag, I think that color would be, I want to say green for some reason. I don't know why. Scumbag seems like a green color. It's like the Eagles, they're scumbags, so green. Uh, also, green's my favorite color. <laughs> it's Eagles green. Eagles green, there we go. But you thought green was a scumbag color because you're like, oh, I like green. <laughs> so I guess I am a bit of a scumbag. <laughs> Takes one to know one. I mean, that's also true. I am I am a piece of shit, but I'm also a bit of a scumbag. And speaking of Not shit, a- speaking of shit, the last thing I had on the uh, pre cum segment that I just realized I hadn't spoken about was uh, asses are just shitty 3D printers. A hundred percent. That's exactly what that's- they are. Especially if you have diarrhea, then you're not even good at being a shitty one. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even coming out solid anymore. You're just painting the bowl. It's like, what is this? Like, go, I don't know. <laughs> don't know. It's a snake, maybe. We're lucky. <laughs> oh, no, if you're lucky, it would be a number two. Yeah, that'd be a cool one. Which I have seen before. It was amazing. But yeah, on that note, I guess that was our pre-com segment. Yeah. And now on to the Comeback Kids segment, where we tell you guys Mm. what's been happening in the news or what we feel like talking about. It's brought to you this week by Alamo Remedy CBD, the best CBD products in the world. AlamoRemedy.com. Head on over to alamoremedy.com. Use our promo code PTG at checkout. You're going to get 10% off your order. If you want the CBD gummies, you want the tincture oil, you want the capsules, just that that's an easy capsule you just pop every morning or when you're feeling stressed. You got the okay. uh, the, the lotions. Uh, I love the lotion. The lotion's the shit. And um, oh, yeah. yeah, Pat's using the lotion right now. They also have the hemp flower. It's not weed. Kind of looks like weed, kind of smells like weed. It gets you a little, uh, you get that, that that good feeling, but you're not paranoid. You don't have the awkwardness. You're not going to be like uh, weird in public or anything like that. It just kind of chills you out. It helps you de-stress from a day. Um, the gummies I always tell you guys about are awesome. If you're flying, take one and see how you like that. And um, yeah, it doesn't have Delta 8. This is not Delta 8. I just saw that Delta 8 got banned in Texas, but um, this is not have Delta 8 in it. Yeah. Um, so this is all hundred percent legal stuff. Well, Alamo, shit. AlmoRemedy.com promo code PTG for 10% off your order. Let them know you heard about them on past the gravy podcast. Give them a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Almo remedy and at Almo remedy CBD. Let them know you came from the gravy gang. Almo remedy CBD, Almo mm. promo code PTG at checkout for 10% off your order. This is the comeback kid segment. It's the Comeback Kid. The Comeback Kid of the Week. The Comeback Kid of the Week. Bitch. Our first Comeback Kid this week is parenting. Because this made me think of you, Pat. I don't know if you heard about this, if you saw this. But China is thinking about punishing parents for their children's bad behavior. Like if kids are, uh, you know, committing like minor crimes in public, they're like, hey, hey, that's on you. That's on you. You always talk about, you know, like the kid in the restaurant that's running around being a little shit. Like you should be able to be like, you know what? We're jacking your bill up $50 because your kid's fucking annoying. This is annoying kid fee. Like I am not all the way for this. I think we have to put a strict set of guidelines on what we're going to punish parents for, but at a certain point, maybe not like jail time or anything, but fines. Absolutely. I think we should be able to, Hey, is your kid being the fucking little kid on the, on the airplane that's running up and down the aisle when we told you guys to fucking sit the fuck down. All right. Well, that's cool. Cause now you, you know what? That's a $200 charge. You got to buy everybody a drink in the entire place. Like something, something stupid like that, where it's just like, this is what you get guys. I understand you can't control your kids, but they don't control your kids either. And they didn't ask you to bring your kids. I can't believe I'm about to say these words. Good job, China. Like I'm with you though. Like I don't, you know, your kid wrecks a car and you got to pay for, which you pretty much already do. Uh, your kid kills somebody and you're ch- no, but well, like I'm talking so, like not social not, stuff, not like, adult like I'm, with kids. You. I'm talking about like kids under the age of like 10. 
Like, yeah. you know, like toddlers that like, I understand toddlers, are some, uh, you know, they're wild sometimes, but if you're at a restaurant and your toddler's running and pushing food off somebody else's table, like you get a warning. And after that, it's like, you know what? Now you're paying for their dinner. You're, if you're on a plane and your kid keeps just kicking the seat in front of you and you don't do anything about it, guess what? Sky Marshall's going to come over and tase you and tase your kid. No, no, I don't know if we can, I don't know about that. Okay, they're going to have you hold your kid's hand while you get tased. No, it's just a monetary fine where it's just like, hey, don't be a fuckhead. Tell your kid not to be a fuckhead. I'm sorry. See, I'm combining your idea with China's and uh, I'm going to add some punishments in here as well. Because you know China's going to have punishments. Don't, but no, okay. I'm, I'm I mean, with they you, haven't specifically like, broken it down yet. But just there's some things that they're saying like sometimes that you're you're ruining public happiness you know if, if you are at the, if your kids at the restaurant running around causing a mess causing a scene uh, well, a call, the point, police officer will walk in and punch you in the face not and i don't think it's even like a thing we need to have like the police in. i think like like businesses need to be able i'm to thinking add, of it like, like in a tax like a child not like not all the time but a shitty child tax like your or waiter had to I, deal with a kid that fucking was yelling the whole time and crying and being weird and shit. Like, so that's a fifteen dollar or add on to your bill for an annoying kid tax. Or I just walk over and slap you in the face. No, and be like, maybe again, maybe pass that down the line. About. You're doing your thing. I'm doing my thing, man. Also, I, I don't want this, this to apply to just children. Like, I, I think we should just start hitting more adults in public for acting like assholes. But that, like, that's like where we have like, you know, police jurisdiction and stuff. I thought like with kids, it's more just like, hey, hey, don't do that. You know, like, and now here's a, here's money you have to pay. Here's a fine you got to pay because your kid's being a little shit. I'm, I'm possibly more on board with this than anything we've ever done just, before. Just like if your kid's being a shit, I understand it happens. I understand you're not in control of them 100, percent but then take him to the car like our parents used to. And just, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you when we get home if you don't get back in that motherfucking restaurant and just act like a normal goddamn kid. Like you know, I get yeah. there's special needs and stuff that obviously there would be exceptions for. I understand that, but if you just have you know a normal kid that's just being an asshole, I think you should have to pay for that sometimes. If it's a normal it, kid or if it's just a kid that's just being chill, like you don't get, you don't have to do anything. I'm not saying we should have an, a, like a mandatory child tax. I'm pro, I'm pro kids getting to have fun. You know, if your kid's being a little asshole and you are just ignoring it and refusing to do anything about it, guess who lives in China now? If it's affecting, if it's affecting someone else's happiness, dining experience, your kid is, yes. Or any experience that they're at because your kid's yeah. being a shit. Then yes, I think that maybe there should be, I don't know about like physical punishments or jail time or anything, but fines, absolutely. I'm so on board with this. I love it. So parenting is back. That's just gonna, I think that that's gonna really help with parenting if that was that was a thing. I don't know when this is gonna go. They're drafting up the bill right now in China, but um, very rarely do we say, but solid idea. Some way, in some ways, obviously not all the way. And I mean, I didn't like this was a really long article. I'm going to be honest. And I kind of quit reading about halfway through it because I don't care enough to finish. Yeah, farther it. than I did. I read the beginning of it and it gave me all I needed to know that they're drafting up a bill to, uh, to punish parents for the like, child misbehavior. I'm cool with it. You know, my um, so motto, parenting. fuck these kids. Uh, and Michael Jordan's. Huh? Um, so, so parenting. Comeback kid this week. Another comeback kid we got is robots because again, it's been a good run, guys. We're fucked. I um I I, I think it's our job to keep you guys updated on how close we are to being fucked. If somebody would make us a meter, I'd like a like how fucked are we? Not fucked, really fucked. Like in the red, like you know, like they have the terrorism, yeah, the terrorism watch thing where it's like yellow, not great. Orange worse than yellow, red bad news. Like I think right now we're solid, like orange. We're yeah. solid orange in this. And uh, you may be saying, "Well, Alex, why? Last time it was just a dog that could run around, and it was it was doing tricks with the marching band." Well, those same exact Boston Dynamics dogs—they've now strapped a gun to it, a fucking gun, Pat. 
Not just any kind of sniper. Have you seen any robot movie ever? Have you seen any, like the Terminator, any sci-fi movie of all time? What happens when you give robots guns? It's bad news. Bro, they're going to be able to parkour up onto roofs and like into trees and shit and then take us out from long distances. Yeah, they're going to be sniper robots. That's a, that's like, that is a terrifying thought. I'm kind of excited. No, I'm horrified. Now it's done for, dude. Now it's like aneurysms and this. I can just be done at any moment. Like it's comforting to me. I got two ways to die now and I'll never feel it. Tsunami. Uh, you'd feel a tsunami. You might not know until it's over. But you'd feel like like a aneurysm happens, bam, you drop dead. Sniper to the head, bam, you drop dead. It's instantaneous. Tsunami, you're going to fucking drown and be crushed by other things in the water. Thanos. That'd be pretty you dope. Just, you just turn to dust, right? And it's over with. God, I would feel so bad for all of our listeners if that happened and you were the one taken out. And I was like, oh, no, I got to learn how to do it. Like, I got to drive over you're to your here. place. You're like, fuck! Uh, like... I would have to drive over to your place, like turn off the recording, edit it. We'd get one episode every six weeks. I'd still record weekly, but it would take six weeks to put out every episode. Yeah. Well, I mean, as long as it would just be a, every a six weekly episode, <laughs> every sixth week episode, that'd be fine. It'd be like, like report cards in school. There we go. The, the past the gravy report card with Pat. Robert would quit. He doesn't want to work with me one on one. Really, what this podcast would become is that idea I had a long time ago of just me talking into my phone's recording device while taking shits. That's what the podcast would become. You got to be shitting me with Pat Dion. You got. <laughs> That's a cool name for a podcast. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, hopefully this one continues for a while, but just yeah, like don't go, do that, Thanos. Going back to the robot thing, like it, the the whole story that brought my attention to it, it says two U.S. weapons companies have collaborated and managed to strap a sniper rifle on the back of a robot dog, the quad the quadrupedal unmanned ground vehicle, or QUGV, is designed to be unstoppable. Uh, bad move there. It can fire out uh, 1,200 meters and is equipped with day and night sensors. So we're fucked no matter what. Like they've already, like, why would a weapons company do this? Like, what do you think it's going to do when it, when it becomes self-aware? It's going to turn on you and it's going to be like, hey, I have a sniper rifle. Bam, 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 you're dead. Like now we're in charge of the human. Like, that's how Planet of the Apes worked, guys. Minus the like Wait. robot part. Like they weren't robots and they still took us over. You think a fucking robot's not going to do it? They're going to do it. We've seen this. We've seen this movie over and over and over again. It's a fucking terrible idea. Like whoever the people were that did this, I hate them. Like they should be thrown in jail. They're trying that- to take down mankind and I'm not okay with it. I'm fine with it. I'm not a big fan of mankind. Unless it's the wrestler. How are you not more worried? How are we all not more worried? This, this was not as big a story as it should have been where I was just like, guys. Guys, guy, like I, I feel like it's my duty to share this shit when I come across it because people aren't worried. Dwight Schrute had it down. They all need plugs so we can unplug them. That's it. I, like uh, we, this, uh, this robot dog shouldn't be able to shoot from twelve thousand meters. That's a terrible idea. It's because you're turning man's best friend into man's worst enemy is what you're trying to do with these robot dogs, and it's it's the worst thing ever. And I, like when dogs start killing us, like dude, this. Do you know how wrong we got things? Dogs, he's just those, robot dogs are going to kill us. He's just a little sniper, buddy. They're just going to lure you in like that. You'll be like, oh, you're cute. It'll be like in, in Jurassic Park when Newman got killed. I can't even imagine a dog. That little thing was like, oh, he's like, oh, you're cute. That's cool. Be like, oh, what's up, buddy? You want to treat? And it just spits acid in your face and you're dead. And this will be like, oh, I'm a dog. Here's a ball. And you'll, you'll throw the ball. And I'm sorry, Weezy. I didn't mean to say that word. I didn't mean to say that word. <laughs> Okay, but you, it'll be like, you're going to throw the B-A-L-L and you'll be like, oh, okay, come on over here, buddy. And then it'll be like, bam, 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 you're dead. And that'll be it. That'll be how they get all of us. Because if you don't think- Yeah, but at least you'll die. Bring, you'll die bring, doing if, what you love, playing with a dog. Not that kind of dog. I mean, if a dog brings dog. you a ball, it's just like, you're a bad person if you don't throw the ball. Yeah. That's how it is. So like, even if it's a robot dog, you're like, uh, it's got a gun on it. Please don't. And like you'll reach down again. It's just bam, you're dead. See, I would throw it because 
I'd be like, I wonder if he's just going to shoot it out of the air. I got to see this. But by the time you even bent down to pick it over or pick it up, you're done. Yeah, but then you die and your last thought is, I'm going to do something cool with a dog. And then, oh, no, this dog has betrayed me. Eh, it's okay. He's a dog. He probably had his reasons. With you, yeah. But still, I, this, is a bad, this is a bad road we're going down, guys. I'm cool with it. This is not fuck. good. This is not good at all. Not good I'm at lo- all. <laughs> I, I, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> What's the point you're at? You're like, fuck it. Yeah, dude. It's uh, I, I think what it is is you have someone you care about. You love Emma. You don't want the world to end. And I'm just like, yeah, take her down. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's like that old Ron White joke where the guy on the plane sitting next to him goes, if one of these engine fails, how long will the other one last? And he's like, I've been drinking since noon. I was like, I fucking, I don't know, all the way to the scene of the crash. <laughs> <laughs> all the way. Yeah, all the way to the ocean floor. <laughs> fuck it, man. Take it down. I don't care. <laughs> Just kill all the communists with us and I'm cool. Um, our next comeback kid is golf because golf is back. And the Rod Ryan show boobs rock charity golf tournament is going down tomorrow in Houston at wildcat golf course. And I heard a breaking rumor. news, breaking news, Pat, would you like to, would you like to share the breaking news? I'm going to be there, baby. What? Pat's going to be there. The, by the time you all listen to this, it'll probably have already been done. But uh, yeah, I guess I should probably tweet it out that I'm going to make it. Well, but yeah, you should tweet that out tomorrow morning. Okay. And if any of you listen to this before then, you can tweet it out. I don't care. We're not I'm going to put this you. episode out early. That's yeah, why we're, we're recording this press. early. Because, yeah, we, are, we we tell you guys how it is. And Robert's not even here to, to edit stuff out unless I guess we tell him to. But, Robert, just leave most of it in unless we tell you not to. Yeah. But Pat is going to go to the golf tournament. Shout out to our buddy, Bro Brad. He bought the Pasta Gravy Hole sponsorship, so there will be a gravy hole again. Last time, we didn't really know what to do with it. So it was just kind of like a hole that had the name of the podcast on it. And we were like, yeah, let's drink a beer here. Now. Kenya Valdez, love her. She's awesome. Strong woman of the year vibes from this move. She's going to make baby biscuits to hand out. Josh Tree is in charge of gravy. MVP, maybe going back to back MVP. Again, strong favorite, I would say now, for the 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 gravies award for MVP this year. Maybe Kenya and him. I don't know. I don't know. Do we have co-MVPs this year? Who knows? Who knows? This is going to be an exciting gravy. Possible. The, the race for the gravies is really heating up. But Josh Tree is making a bunch of gravy. We will be having mini biscuits and gravy shots at the gravy hole. It's going to be awesome. And then, I don't know, Pat, do you have a cooler? I think I've got something around. If not, I can borrow one from work. We got some big-ass coolers. We can, we can get a cooler with some ice in it. I'll bring the Southern store that I got left at my house. Uh, and uh, we'll have some some Southern stars, some bombies, some strawberry bombies, a little bit of everything tomorrow when we get out there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm sorry to all of you guys that are not going to be out there. But Kenya, Josh Tree, Bro Brad, love all you guys. I am so excited for tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. And really, the goal is us to just get as many people that are golfing to subscribe to Pass Gravy as possible. If you are not at the golf tournament, what you can do to help out is get as many people at your office or wherever to subscribe to Pass Gravy. Just let us know. But um, yeah, golf is back. It's going to be awesome. The gravy hole is going to be there again. I, I know Brett Brandon and Todd Voss were, uh, were part of it last year. And I don't know if either of them are going, but if they are, we'll see them out there. If not, hey, we love you guys, and we'll be we'll be tweeting with you tomorrow from the golf course. Love you. But I'm stoked. Pat's gonna be there. It's gonna be a ton of fun, and golf is back, baby. I've never been more excited for a golf tournament than I am for this one. And it all goes to cancer research, breast cancer research at MD Anderson Cancer Center, not awareness like the NFL does where they donate like 3%. It goes to research where they're trying to find cures for this stuff. So it's all for a great cause. And people are going to be getting some gravy and some biscuits, and it's all going to be awesome. So shout out to Josh Tree, 
Kenya, Valdez, and Bro Brad. We love you guys and everybody else that's going to be at the golf tournament as well. And everybody that couldn't make it, but whatever. We still have all you guys. And uh, I know Raimundo is going to be out there. Something came up. We love you, Raimundo. And um, hope, you, hope you're feeling better. I know he's recovering from the, the appendicitis as well. Our next comeback kid is Ed Orgeron, Coach O for oh, LSU Tigers. football. He and LSU have reached an agreement that they will part ways at the end of the season. This is a guy that won a national championship two seasons ago. And then over the last two seasons, his team has been decimated by injuries. Is this a little too early to be parting ways with a coach or is there something else that you think is going down? Yeah. I hate to say it. It's not early. I read into it like right before we started and like, I guess when he came out and said he liked Trump, like a week and a half before his team was having like a justice march at LSU last year. Apparently he just like lost the fucking locker room entirely. He's completely mismanaged all of it since Joe Brady left. And uh, uh, what's his name? Who's the Baylor head coach. That was his D coordinator. After that, everyone that he's Dave brought Aranda? in. Be, yeah. Everyone that he's brought in to be coordinators has been absolutely awful. They brought in uh, what's his name last year. Who was the D coordinator when they won it back in the day, like with Saban, I think. Yeah. And they, uh, Picardo, Picaro, something like that. They brought him in. He instantly didn't listen to o- Coach O at all, was late to meetings, didn't give a fuck. They paid him $7 million over three years, fired him $1 million e- uh, one year in for $4 million because they had – I think there was only two teams that let up more yards per game than them last year. And, like, yeah, there's been injuries, but, like, everything behind the scenes, Coach O has completely mishandled being a head coach. He just fell into it perfectly, getting Burrow and having the most talented team. Incredible. Like Joe Brady since, gets a head like, coach job. Miami. I, think the, I think Joe Brady's at the Panthers now. Yeah. I mean, th- he did that he's well. He's going to be a head coach. He picked though, right? Joe Brady. Yeah. He was like a, a, a low level assistant in the Saints, and he picked him to like revamp his entire offense, give them a spread. He did that well, but Joe did so well that instantly he moved on. And without him, they just can't do shit. Yeah, he's he's, 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 he's just actually such, done. He's so since, Louisiana. He seemed like he was oh, yeah. a, a coach for life almost. Like it seemed like that. Like when they won a national title, I was like, this guy's not going anywhere that, ever. That like, shows this guy you how got bad it. he was. Done. He was a journeyman. But it, and it's like Gus Malzahn. I think was four or five years after he won at, at Auburn before he was out. But I was trying to think like, when was the last time you remember a coach winning a national championship and being out, other than like some scandal? Was Gus Jim, on. Right, but, but, Gus I, on, but like, other than I, that, like, was it Jim Trestle? That was scandal related, even though it was well, over tattoos. Urban Meyer, he didn't really step down. He suspended himself for a couple of games. Did Gene Chizik win the national title with Auburn? Gus Malzahn is the coach now. Gene Chizik won, right? And now he's that's what it was. Gene, at UCF. Gene Chizik You're right. won the guy that Malzahn and replaced. You're right. Malzahn, no, no, no. Malzahn left. And Malzahn might have replaced him, but Malzahn left and went to like Tulane to head coach. And well, as soon as Malzahn right. was gone, Sam Houston ex coach is that Tulane now? No, I'm saying after Chiswick won the national title, oh, Malzahn right. left, and as soon as he left, they were awful. Like that team was all Malzahn. It wasn't Chiswick. It was all Cam Newton, honestly. Well, that no him with Malzahn. That's like the whole offense was Malzahn. As soon as him and Cam Newton left, they couldn't do anything. But like we're getting off topic. But yeah, that I mean. Coach O is LSU. Everything about him screams that this is the job. They talk that like he's from He knows how but, to get a crawfish, and I'm fighting in a five minute period. He, but the fact that it's fun to watch years, press conferences with. Two years after he wins the national title, he's out. It shows you how bad he's been behind the scenes. Like I, I you, thought, you can, like you can just Google it and like happened. read the article. You win a title nowadays, and I'm I'm not saying that kids always didn't want to go to like the front runners. Everybody, obviously, you want to go to Florida. You want to go to. You want to go to Alabama? L- you want, LSU you to to, has always been one of right. those schools. Though, LSU is always they can dip like, into Texas and Houston. But that was why I was like, when they won that title, I was like, dude, LSU and Bama's rivalry is about to go nuts because they're going to be one and two in draft or in, in in recruiting classes every single year. And it just it didn't go that way. It just never. That, went that, that was way. always his forte. My is an LSU grad, like so. I mean, I watched Sam Houston FCS style, but like because my brother went to LSU, I root for LSU. I didn't never really give a shit about LSU until he went there, and I was like, all right, he roots for Sam. I root for LSU. That's kind of how it works. But like, I remember watching that game last year, the South Carolina game, where it was their first game back, 
after breaking college football and being the national champs. And it just, they shit the bed. They lost. And it was, that was how they started. It was like, okay, well there's, there's injuries, you know, there's some problems, but like, then you thought like this year, like they'll be back. And they just never were able to do it. They lost to Kentucky, which I know Kentucky's good right now, but not great. LSU the whole- shouldn't you lose to Kentucky no. on the reg. And they did. And they've lost to a bunch of games. They've lost, they've lost a bunch of like games that you would never think LSU would lose. And it's just, it's weird. I still thought maybe you'd out, you'd give them one more year, but adding all the stuff that you said, I really didn't look too far into it. I obviously yeah, it's- should have, but it's weird it's bad. It's crazy when you see people lose a locker room. I mean, I'm watching a football team that my favorite football team right now in the NFL. I don't know. I, I hope our coach still has a locker room. I don't think it's gone full losing the locker room mode yet, but it's a scary thing when you lose a locker the, room. Just, it, the whole plan for him, the whole plan for Coach O when he was hired there was I'm going to hire great coordinators. I'm going to stay out of their way, and I'm just going to be a figurehead and a recruiting beast, which – Everywhere he's been, he's been a recruiting beast. He was awesome for USC when he was there. Everywhere, when he was at Ole Miss, Miss. he did a fucking great job there. That's like his thing. He's a great recruiter. And, yeah, that's why it worked immediately is he got Joe Brady. He got uh, Ronda, whatever his fucking name is. He got the right – but he's failed at it miserably since then. And if your whole thing is I'm just going to hire good guys, get out of their way, and then I'm going to get athletes in here. If you can't guys. hire the if you if you keep fucking up and not getting the guys, then it doesn't work. But I'm actually I mean, excited. You, I'm excited. You see about that in piece. football all the time, though. You see that where you know somebody hires a coordinator away and that defense plummets because it was the, they were the best defensive coordinator, but now you don't have them. Your coat, your head coach was like, I was relying so much on this guy to run the defense. Now I gotta I've got to put my attention here because they're they're not as good. We don't have somebody else as manageable, and you just can't always replace. To the level of that. That's why people unless you're Nick coaches. Saban. But that's why well, Nick Saban is just like, oh, you were an ex-head coach? Come do this thing. And like it's Alabama. Nick Saban broke college football recruiting forever now, where he's just like, um, I don't know, man. Like, like he doesn't really have to recruit. He's like, Well, do you see all of these titles? Would you like to win one of these? Because no player that's work, stayed with me for four years has ever not won. Yeah, if you give me four a years, title. every player that's ever done that. It, since whatever year has won a title so do you want a title or do you want to just fuck off and not get a title like, okay we'll probably come do that like he gets yeah. the best athletes i thought lsu was about to get to that point that was like you need to like clemson got close where they started to get all those guys because this year like this these days i think people go to places they can play but like they want to go to the alabamas you're going to get the best people they want to go to the front runner that's how college football recruiting has always worked i just thought that like when you win a title like LSU did, I thought they were going to get all the best guys and they got a bunch of good guys. They just weren't able to make it work. And then the coordinators, Joe Brady, though, I think this speaks, this speaks volumes of how much he really did have to go into that. Dave Aranda is already in head coaching discussions, like, or debates. Like, is he going to be an NFL head coach when there's an opening next season? Uh, I, I would be very shocked if at least Joe Brady is not an NFL head coach. Just being like, well, dude, he well, de- fucking had LSU in what LSU it, was. It depends on what their offense looks like the rest of the year. Cause they've been bad the last couple of weeks, but I'm, I'm actually they very excited about this. Best player. I love coach. O, and as far back as I can remember my whole life, I've hated LSU. Fuck LSU. It, it's just like fuck Oklahoma. It's a bunch of state traders that go there. They leave Texas and they cross the border. And then, you know what? I'm fucking done with you. I hate you. Plus they had Nick Saban for years and I've hated Nick Saban since he was at Michigan state because I'm a Notre Dame fan and I hold grudges a long fucking time. I get to go back to hating LSU now. Cause when coach O was there, I was going to root for him. I like coach O. I like coach O. I don't give a fuck about LSU. Fuck LSU. They got good gumbo. And Coach Sad. O, and Sad now they see. don't got Coach O. At the Sad end of the year, see. when this season's over, they have Alex Bregman. Fuck you. Yeah, I mean, I'll always love Bregman, but you know. Well, I don't know. Do you like Bregman now? I love. Bregman I haven't now. discussed with you. Like, what are your like? How are who are you rooting for, Pat? Uh, uh, it's it's weird. Uh, you have when to the pick Red a Sox, team. When the Red Sox and Yankees play. It's very weird for me because I actually don't ever like really root for anybody. I just want to watch good baseball because at the end of it, I truly am happy whoever goes on. I have found myself this series, though, honestly rooting more for the Astros. And I think part of it is I just going into the series, I thought 
Oh my God. Dodgers just hit a massive ding dong. They're up 2-0. Uh, You're going to love this when you hit it tomorrow. Yeah. I, I just thought the Astros bats were better equipped to face the Dodgers is what my thinking was. Now the Red Sox have the hottest lineup on the fucking planet. And the Astros arms are just completely depleted. So, and, and a big part of it for me too, was I think I wanted to see Correa leave with the title with the Astros. Cause I really don't see him coming back next year. And now at the Red Sox fans are being assholes to him. So he's going to go to the Yankees. I was discussing with this with my brother last year or last night. How? How's you're he going to the Yankees? You're paying Cole, what, 34 million a year? Oh, Stan's dude, getting no, about no. 30 so what, million a what's year. What's about to happen? Was, Judge um, is coming up and you're going to pay Correa 35 million. You're going to pay over $90 million, almost $100 million to just three guys with Judge's contract coming up. Yep. So if you do that, you're basically Baseball. saying, Judge, you're done. We're not no, going to sign you. No, they're going to pay Judge too. So what's about to happen is the Yankees, I don't know if you saw this, I guess. Aaron, I don't give a like fucking. I don't want Aaron Boone to be a comeback kid, but Aaron Boone is is that's shocking to me. That's shocking Aaron Boone is coming back him. for. They gave him a three year deal with an option for a fourth, depending on if the team wants him back or not. I couldn't believe he got more than a one year deal. I couldn't believe he got a deal at all. I yeah, thought, I he, thought was he was out. done. But what this means is they're about to go full on oh nine oh oh nine twenty ten mode, where they're just like we got to win a fucking title guys. We're going to just do whatever we can to do it where they were like to share was about to go to the Red Sox. And they're like, ah, 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 come here, come here. Here's a check, write what you want to get on it here. Now you're our first baseman. Cool. All right. CC's about to you. Here's a check. Write what you want on it. Cool. Your eyes now. AJ Burnett. Ah, fine. Here, just write a check. We don't give a shit. Like they're going to be at Carlos Craig. You tell us what you think you are worth. We'll pay it to you. And then they're going to just pay everybody. They're going to, they're going to pay everybody. So they can get the one. And then the fucking organization now, cause it's not, it's not, George Steinbrenner, he's going to get the one. He's going to think he's good for another 20 years. And then they'll fuck off. And, yeah, maybe they will lose Judge or whatever. But, like, I think Gardner's gone. He wasn't that much money. Just the, the, the Yankees are going to go all in this next year. Not that, like, they didn't they, – they tried to toe the line of, like, we're going to do a rebuild with farm system and everything and then also sign people. They got Cole. Cole wasn't enough. They're going to go fucking full-on Yankees, I think, this offseason. It's going to take. And if they don't, the they're going to be a bad team again. They're just going to be the exact same thing because like, they have to for, change everything. And they did. It's going to really take 35 million years. It's going to take 10, 10 years, 350, that. possibly $400 million to sign Carlos Correa. Because if you're the Yankees, the way the Yankees look at it is you have to win a title so bad. It doesn't matter if you give somebody a stupid contract. Like the Albert Pujols contract would not have looked dumb if the Angels won a title. Even if it was just one title, you can defend, like, well, they did. He did get him this title. If, if like a rod had that absurd uh, absurd paycheck he was getting and he won a title it was like well he did win a title okay. which is stupid that you only you only need to get one where it's like patrick mahomes i feel like he should win a couple like a lot of people like i i personally feel like you should make you should be like i want multiple titles with you the yankees are like we gotta we gotta win now we gotta win quick and we got to do whatever we can to get it. Brian Cashman, their GM, was even like, shortstop is definitely a huge issue for us right now. You know who's a shortstop? I just, I can't, I can't have that happen. Well, no, the Yankees, which is funny because of all the people that talk shit about the Astros cheating thing, you know that I am not one of them. Um, I believe everybody I can't cheats. Have I'm, that I'm happen. pro cheating. I think that makes baseball more fun in, if, if everybody cheats. Is uh, I, I think that the Yankees are just like, well, Astros have been really good. What if we just get all the ex Astros and then we'll have the Astros so they will be good? It can't have that happen. Though, there's the one, win, like, if they there's cut Verlander, one way. if they bring like Verlander in, they just like, they literally just get every Astros cast off. They're like, come on in. Is Gonzalez there's back? One way. Bring Marwin will, over. There's one way I'd be okay with Carlos going to the Yankees. If he goes, yeah, I'll sign with you. You all have to come out and admit that you were doing exactly what we did before we did it. And it did come from Beltran and Beltran brought it from you to us. And if you guys admit that you were doing it, I will come and sign with you. I don't think he'll do that. And then he, and then he gets them to do it and he goes, fuck you. I'm going back to Houston. Let's go. I just don't think the Astros are going to pay him, but I, I don't either. I don't have any, I don't, I don't have any confidence in Jim Crane to follow through on what he said he was going to do. We're going to pay people in the right spots. And I get it. He paid 
Uh, he paid Carlo or not Carlos. Fuck. He paid Altuve. He's paying Bregman. Uh, you've got uh, Tucker and uh, Jordan's contracts coming up in the future. We've got some elite, elite prospects that can play shortstop or outfield coming up in the pipeline right now. Uh, Pena looks like he's going to be a fucking dude. We've got other really good young players, but you can't you can't come out and say publicly, "I'm going to spend the money on this team when I need to," and then let Springer and Correa walk in back to back years and not have the fan base get pissed about it. Right, like because those two dudes are the heart of this team. Like, yeah, Altuve is is the rock. I would say he. Everyone follows Altuve. He's the quiet leader. He does everything. Springer was really just the the heart and soul of that team. Like he got everyone galvanized, and Correa was the in your face, fuck everybody else, H town versus everybody guy. And I'll come out publicly, and I'll be the face of it, and I'll piss off other people. I'll take the heat. I don't give a fuck. Like I said, pay Correa. I don't give a shit if he misses eighty games a fucking year, as long as he's healthy for the playoffs every year. Because every year in the playoffs, Correa shows up fucking big time. I'm just getting pissed off now thinking about this. And so we got there from Ed Orgeron. Yeah. Fucking sports, man. Well, okay. Let's move on. Let's move on to our next comeback kid, Aaron Rodgers. The other A-Rod. We talked about one A-Rod earlier. The other A-Rod, Aaron Rodgers, because he was a little upset that some Bears fans were flipping him the bird. I'm so happy again now. So he discount double checked and was like, I own you. I've always fucking fucking owned you. And I still own you. Oh, oh my God. Just Aaron yelling that at Bears fans was just, it gave me hope that he might come back next year. I if still don't think he's going to. Yeah. No, no. I've already, I said it gave me hope. I've already mentally processed that this is the farewell tour. This is the last dance. This is Jordan leaving the Bulls. I'm fine with it. I, I really am. I'm okay. Like, whatever happens with this season, even if we don't win the ship, I, I'm okay. Because I've mentally prepared for it. But just seeing how much he loves shitting on the Bears and shitting on Bears fans. It's just like, Aaron, do you really want to leave that? I don't think you do. Come home you to got Papa. two built-in wins every, game, every season. Just do this. You get to hurt Big Cat's feelings every every single fucking season, which nobody, most people probably won't know that. But it's but, okay. It's a famous Bears fan. It's okay. I. It's just, God, that was so... I don't even have a word for how perfect that was. It was, you know what? I do. It was pretty funny. I do. Perfect and schlag. It was perfect and schlag. It's exactly what it was. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Now, it would have been better if they could have covered the tease spread, but I still got a push. That was okay. But yeah, yeah, just Aaron Rodgers just absolutely shitting down the Bears' throats. And then, like, it's weird. He did it in a game where he didn't even really go off. Like, yeah, he had two touchdown passes and a rushing touchdown. But he only threw for, like, 225, I think. Like, normally when Aaron plays the Bears, he throws for, like, 350 and just just fucking shits on him all game long. And this yeah. one, he, like, quietly built the stats. There's a pretty solid flex, and there's nothing really you can do from a Bear. I think one of the uh... – Old Bears lineman was like, oh, I'd punch him in the face if he did that. It's like, yeah, but you'd still lose to him. Yeah. So and also, what that accomplish? his entire offensive line would murder you. Probably so, yeah. I would I would imagine so. But, um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, definitely a comeback kid this week, and his hair still looks dumb. You know, it's it, it's a year for dumb hair. I don't know if you've noticed. I've got some really Is that why you're doing it on. for Aaron Rodgers? No, I'm doing it because I want to mullet. I just every time I have a little time to actually go to a barber shop and get it cut, something comes up. But it's definitely it's definitely long enough now for mullet length. Like it's very it's happening mullet. very soon. Oh yeah, I, I mean like trashy, like good, very good. tight, it should very be. high and very bad. high and like tight. It's, exactly, it's perfect. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the last one we had, I I, I added this in. Uh. Most people listening probably don't know who Evander Kane is, but he's got one of the dumbest suspensions in sports history that just happened. Uh, For those of you that don't know, he plays hockey. He plays for the San Jose Sharks. He allegedly gambled on Sharks games, but they couldn't officially figure out if he did, so he had to get a pass on that. That was was just a pissed-off ex-wife trying to get him in trouble. Um, Wait, were you just drinking the pills there? Did you find some pills? Uh, No, I'm drinking uh, drinking my fave, the Strawberry Bombshell Blanche. 
Sorry, you can like, see at the gravy hole tomorrow at like a, Wildcat Golf Course. I fucking can't stay focused here. Um, so yeah, the NHL doesn't require to get a vaccination. I think there's like four players in the league that don't have it. But if you play in California, you can't play unless you have it. He plays in California. So what this moron tried to do was submit a, a falsified vaccine card, got caught, and got suspended for a quarter of the season. One of the all-time dumbest suspensions in the history of sport. Did you hear about this yet, Alex? I saw he was suspended. I didn't read anything into it. Yeah. We don't usually bring tried- up, like we don't usually get deep into hockey talk on this podcast. But this was just so dumb that it had to be brought up. Right. I saw he was suspended for like 20 something games. 21 games. And it was like, okay, for, for violating protocol. And I was like, for what? Like, did he gamble on the, the team? That's a little bit of a, of, no, a, it, of a small of a small suspension for that kind of offense. But yeah, I didn't realize that's what he did. That's fucking hilarious, though. Yeah. yeah the fake and, ID, basically. Yeah. And and what it is, is like I said, you can't play in California if you're not vaccinated. So. Or apparently, New York, there, 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 there are four players, like I said, that are not vaccinated. Apparently, five actually. Now that this has come out, um, but all that's going to happen with them is when they're playing in a state that requires it, they can't play that game, so they're not being paid for that game. And those players are like, "Cool, just, just weird. take my game check for that fucking game." That is, but, weird, and, they're, and they're like, like "But I'm not going to get it." So that's that's their choice. That's fine. But Depending when you on your play schedule, in though, a state really showing like, I don't give a shit at that. Like, I don't know. I'm not into like forcing anybody to do anything, but that is weird that it's like, okay. Like what if your best player didn't get vaccinated and shit is like, like say, like, I know, I don't know if Alexander Ovechkin did, I would assume he did, but um, say like Alexander Ovechkin did that, the best player in the league. And it's like, he's just not playing because they're playing San Jose tonight. That's, that's weird. It's re- yeah. I mean, it's really only a problem for the most part, if you live in a state where it's required, because then you're missing half of the games right there. Bam. Like uh, one of the guys, I can't remember who it is. I think he plays in Minnesota. I think they have like 10 games this year. Maybe not even that many where, which is an eighth of the season. It's a, it's a decent amount, but it's, you know, those games he can't play when they travel into areas where you have to have it. But it, it is what it is. He's still available the rest of the time. You just got to hope in playoffs that something can be figured out if you have to go playoff somewhere. But I, I read this this morning and I just, I started laughing. I was like, what an asshole. <laughs> so, he, so well, like, honestly, like we're not, we're not far enough into vaccine cards where it's like, I don't know how they would know if it was a fake. Like on my card, it just has like a name. They wrote, they wrote the Johnson and Johnson one. They probably they tracked like where he, he was. He must have done like it says the hospital you got it at and everything, and they probably check with the hospital. And the hospital is like, we have no record, right? Of him being probably vaccinated. like he's probably like, there's no fucking chance they're gonna do that. Yeah, because he's an idiot. He already went bankrupt once, by the way, which is wild. And now the cost of this. Well, the you can be games, president if you go if you go bankrupt multiple times. So that's, that's still, true. But so when you got that. just when you just filed for bankruptcy even though you make millions of dollars a year and now you have to give up $2 million worth of game checks just for these 21 games. And then if he doesn't get vaccinated after that and can't play any of the home games, he's probably going to lose like another 2 million this year. If he can only play select road games. Yeah. that it's sucks. Just... And I get it. If you don't want to get vaccinated, but it's also funny. That's, yeah. that's your right. But request a trade to somewhere where you can play without it or don't falsify a legal document. <laughs> it seems pretty fucking Well, isn't it weird? Like, I, I always thought, like, that there was, like, the, like, I know the NFL, they, they, I don't think that's the rule in the NFL, is it? I don't know. I don't know what the NFL vaccination policy is. We don't need to get vaccination talk. I don't really want, I don't want to go down that road, really. That's a but good it, point. But it feels like, I thought that it was, like, you are vaccinated in the NFL or you have to get a COVID test every day why wouldn't that just be the exact same thing where it's like, you're under the umbrella of like, you are an employee of this that. organization that's traveling, just make him get a COVID test every day. And if you want to be really annoying about it, to like trying to try and push people to do it, like without actually having to force them into doing it, just be like, well, you're going to have to take like three COVID tests a day, make him do that. If he's willing to do that, like they should still be able to play. It's weird that they're not allowed to play at all. 
Maybe, you know, that might be it. Maybe I read it wrong and it's just they have to do that. And maybe he just tried to falsify it so that he didn't have to. But also to me, but I swear I read something about vaccination habit. Everybody should just be COVID tested anyway. Uh, I mean, if I'm they not did pro that, or anti-vax at all. I mean, I have it. I've been vaccinated. Yeah, I, just, I, I think if they did that, then a lot of players would just say, fuck it, that I'm not getting the vaccine. What's the point of getting it if you're still going to test me every day for it? Is what a lot of these guys would say. To not spread it, and it's but, like but, to not spread it, then everybody should technically have to have it, right? That's what the whole argument with all we these athletes to, is, though. We don't they, need to they, go down That's what this they say. This is, I know, this but is another but that's what they always we say. They're like, we're that. young and we're healthy. We're young and we're healthy. If you're going to just test us anyway, then we'll just get tested, and I'm not going to take the chance of yeah. Talk radio, talk radio can discuss vaccinations i don't want to be the podcast that breaks down vaccinations because we don't know enough about it we both are vaccinated we we're not forced to do it i'm vaccinated and against vampires because i don't want to go vampiral because he has all the, the garlic that's why he injects garlic into his veins every single day that's mm-hmm. how it works um all right so yeah evander kane comeback kid of the week that was the comeback kid segment we would now normally move on to the past the gravy picks segment. I guess we're still going to do a mini version of that. We don't have picks for you today, though. We don't because we are recording on a Tuesday. We normally the Tuesday lines are stupid on a Wednesday, and Wednesday lines are pretty shitty at that point. You don't know a lot of injuries. There's countless times, specifically for Pat this season, where like somebody's been out that you bet on, and then it's like the line shifts dramatically, but you still got what we locked in on Wednesday. So what we're going to do is we're still going to post the graphic on Friday with our picks. We're just not picking on Tuesday. So we will have PTG picks this week. Well, I mean, we'll probably post it before Thursday's game would be my guess, right? If we pick a Thursday game. We have not yet picked a Thursday. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I got to look at the line on that. If we I usually kind of try and stay it. away from them, but um, or I, I, at least I try. I usually do because the schedule is like Friday. It just Friday depends on Sundays if I like it. When, when I tweet it. But um, yeah, Twitter – Instagram, Facebook, we'll post our PTG picks at, I believe, 4.30 on Friday, 11 a.m. on Sunday. That's where you can check them out. And um, to recap our picks, congrats to both of us. Two and one, winning weeks all around last week. That brings our total to the season. I am 12 and six. Pat, seven, 10 and one. You're getting back to 500. Slow. I want to I want to look at what my record would be without the Packers. <laughs> I can't. Probably not great. <laughs> There's been a couple weeks where the Packers were my only fucking correct. I might have to just start looking at them and go, okay, well, I'm taking Packers regardless. After that, I like this game. I like this team. So I'm taking the other team instead. That's why I'm always weird to bet the Packers because I'm like, I know Pat is blindly just betting the Packers no matter what. But it's never blind because there are times where I don't take the Packers. And I just usually, usually you do. like them. I usually do, and I. But there are times when I'm like, I I don't trust this line. If I don't bet the Packers, it's because I really don't trust the line. I'd also but like I, to give a fuck you to the Buffalo Bills for just an egregious performance on my fuck football. it. Uh, that was bad. An egregious like, performance I'll, on what I would have exactly wanted my team to do, and what I think they should have done is go for the the touchdown there at the end. They just they didn't get it. They didn't Josh, get it. Uh, it. Just me or his feet slip out from underneath him. Like, I know that guy met him right there anyway, but, like, when he went to plant, his foot just kicked right out. I think, he had yeah. no push on that. So, 12-6 uh, and six is my record. Pat, 7-10-1. and 10 and one. We're going to post our PTG picks later this week, so stay tuned for those. But uh, they will be back in full next week when we return to our, uh, our Wednesday episodes. Um, next up is our What Would Jesus Do segment, where, you know, we had the WWJD bracelets growing up. They never told us, though, what Jesus would do. We always were just left asking the question. We decided we're going to give you the answers. Hit us up, hashtag PTGWWJD, at Pass the Gravy Pod on Twitter is where you can do that. Throw a situation that Jesus might find himself in in today's day and age. And um, just ask us, what would Jesus do in this situation? We'll get to the bottom of it. Hit us up, at Pass the Gravy Pod, hashtag PTGWWJD. Let's get to it now. It's the What Would Jesus Do segment. Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Put him in a situation in a matter of time. If you wrote the stream, do you think he'd make it rhyme? So think about this crazy world in which we live today. And how would Jesus handle it in any given way? 
this week's What Would Jesus Do comes to us from our buddy David Ruiz at David underscore Ruiz 90 on Twitter. He says, if Jesus was a baseball player, what would his walk-up song be? Jesus, take the wheel. This is appropriate with baseball playoffs going on right now. Jesus, take the wheel is a good one. No, no, no. Praise you. Praise you by Fat Boy Slim. That's what Jesus's walk-up song would be. I think Jesus is, it would be Jesus take the wheel if he was a closer. Jesus takes the wheel makes it seem like you're not in control and you're like, I hope this goes well. That makes no. it seem more of like a scared, hopeful song. No, no, like, no, no, no. But if he was a closer and you're playing Jesus take the wheel as he takes the mound, like, yeah, and you're saying, Jesus, take it. Finish this off. You're in control. Lock this down. Because I was going to say, for a walk-up walk song, song, a walk-up walk song, song would be Jesus Walks from Kanye West would also be great. Terrible if he was a closer. You're right. Because the closer coming out saying Jesus Walks, you're like, ah, this is bad. He's going to walk everybody. And if you're like, reason, a, a batter that's going to get walked, you're like, still, he's on base. God, I kind of feel like Enter Sandman would be a great one for him. I don't know Mariana. why. It's already Mariana. No, I think no, Crazy no, 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 You no, by that's, Fatboy that's Slim. That's a walk-up song. Uh, that would be good, but I have to praise you like I should. Uh, 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 I mean, that's a good one. Don't get me wrong. Uh, dude, I'm 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 pulling a blank here. I don't. Nothing is just like usually when we ask these questions, something just kind of comes to me. And Jesus, take the wheel, came to me. But then I realized, no, that's if he was a pitcher. I don't know, man. I guess we're going to have to go with yours because I, I I can't remember the last time I was truly stumped. Like, even when I get stumped. There's so many I, options. I, I talk my way out of it on, uh, on when I get stumped, and I'll eventually come up with something. But I'm just still, man, just – I mean, I could pull out songs that nobody would fucking know, but – Right, yeah, we don't need that. But, yeah, I would say Praise You by Fatboy Slim would be great. And everybody would kind of get a chuckle every time he comes up to bat. Yeah, I mean, it would be a good, it's a good one, so I'll go with it. But I'm just more disappointed. I, I in was uh, I sort of specialized in like we talked about Tebow a lot when I was working on Sports Talk 790 back in the day, and like when I'd fill in. And uh, I remember the the Texans beat the Broncos when they had Tebow one time, and I got to come back one of the one of the, like the the day after. I it was the Matt and adam show or the whatever it was but uh i remember coming back with jesus is just all right and they thought that that was fucking great because we beat the that's Broncos, great. and it was haha tebow reference but that was great and then when um also one of my one of my gems i pulled it wasn't jesus related but it was after the seahawks didn't run it with marshawn and they lost the super bowl that i came back with beast of burden because he would not have been their beast of burden. He would have won him a Super Bowl. And I, Lance Zerline was like fucking nails, Alex. And I was like, maybe I should go to music. Went to the buzz. Boom. History. That's not how I got the gig at all. But just so I'm, I, I always story. I always took pride in my uh, my musical my musical prowess when it came to sports as well. I think I got I'm a, a two sided a two tooled athlete. Spirit in the sky would also be a good one. Spirit in the sky would be a good one too. He would alternate. Go, they usually go through a couple of a year. Yeah, like, well, no, when you've got, I mean, they'll usually have a couple for, like, you know, this is my first at bat, second at bat, third at bat. So, I, yeah, I was scrolling through everything that I have on my iTunes, and I think uh, Spirit in the Sky is what I'll go with. Spirit in the Sky is good. I would go Praise You by Fat Boy Slim. Great question, Both would David. be great. Very timely. Very timely question. Um, Southern Star Brewing Company. That's our sponsor of the Not Cool segment, which is next because, uh, you know, a lot of things in this world are not cool. One of those things that is always cool is Southern Star mm-hmm. Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. I'm drinking mm-hmm. an Oktoberfest. I heard they had a kick-ass Oktoberfest party. Unfortunately, I was not able to make it out there, which just means Pat and I have to make a trip up sooner rather than later. We got to schedule time. a spooktacular. We got to we gotta schedule a spooktacular here in the next couple of weeks. I'll have a date for you guys. because I want you guys to be able to put it on your calendars. The week before Christmas is usually when we do that. Not officially sure which day we're going to do it. I think, though, the Saturday spooktaculars have worked out pretty well. 
Yeah. The one time we did it, it seemed like that was much more convenient for everybody. But I got to get with our buddy Keith, get with the Southern Star fam, and uh, and work on a date for you guys. But uh, let's let's say that by next week or the week after, we will have our uh, spooktacular date nailed down. Um, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Southern Star Brewing Company, best brewery in all of Texas. 3525 North Fraser Street up in Conroe. They're awesome. The Bombshell Pills, that's out now. They, uh, I saw they were putting some Squid Game looking beer. We are boycotting Squid Game, but we will drink whatever beer Southern Star makes, regardless if we are boycotting the show that it was based off of. And um, yeah, Southern Star is the tits. I was on, uh, I was on a show earlier today, and they were talking to us about the dar. They're talking to me about the darn like a Marlin beer, and I was like, yeah, I just bugged them until they gave us a beer name. It was awesome. Uh, but they let, they, they, they love us. They're our family. They're basically family at this point. Oktoberfest. That's what I'm crushing right now. The strawberry bombshell blondes are my personal favorites. They got IPAs. They have the Southern brunch. If you, it's like a beer mimosa. There's something oh. for everybody. If you like beer, if you don't like beer, you're going to love Southern Star Brewing Company. When I go to the bar, I watch soccer. And I was watching football there this Sunday. And I was like, hey, can I just get another bombshell blonde? And they know now when Alex walks in, Alex wants a bombshell blonde. I'm like, just give me, just give me a bomby. Keep them coming. And uh, yeah. Bombies, the old school, the throw, the 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 OG, the Southern Star Bombshell Blonde, and they have the Bombshell Pills now as well. Southern Star Brewing Company, give them a follow. Southern Star Brewing Co. and Southern Star BC on Twitter and Instagram. Let them know you're part of the Gravy Gang. If you go up to the brewery, check out the Pastor Gravy flag they got in the tap room. Like, yo, I'm Gravy Gang. They're like, all right, come on in here. You know, you know what would be a good time to go to go check out that flag would be this upcoming Saturday, the 23rd, 10 to 5. It's October Fest. October Fest. So, you know, usual the usual fun activities they have out there when they have some sort of fest. Notice it was not a bash. It's a fest because they know what not, they're doing. They get it. Yeah, if it was a bash, that'd be weird. Barbecue cook-off, vendors, kids area, craft beer. Yeah. It's put on by Bears, et cetera, or Bears ETC. I don't know that. But it uh, they exist to provide a permanent, community-based, self-sustainable refuge for displaced, exotic, and wild animals, and to educate others about the natural world. What? So you get to he- you get to help out cool animals that are displaced. Cute and animals. You get to have some barbecue and beer. You know, I'm betting they probably would have helped uh, take care of Joe Exotics tigers after he mistreated them. They I bet sound they like would people. I bet they would have. So go Harambe. check out had Harambe not been murdered in cold blood. Did you see they put up a Harambe statue in New that York? That should have been a comeback kid. That's on us. Yeah, you're um, yes, he but, is. Uh, there is a Harambe statue. Our sweet prince finally has a, a, a place where we can pay our condolences. Although I am a little mad, a little peeved at the city of Cincinnati for just not even acknowledging his death anymore. They murdered him, and they're just pretending like it didn't happen. Like, give us a place to mourn. Give us a place to mourn. Thank you, New York, for coming through when we need somebody. And you know who does come through is Southern Star. So go. Southern Star always does. Go see them. Check out our flag. Support the animals. Get some barbecue. Drink some beer. Have a good time. Let them know you're part of the gravy gang. All right. uh, The not cool segment. Tell us something throughout the week that happened to you that makes you just say, hey, man, that's not cool. It can be something that's really bad. It can also be something just that you stub your toe. That's also not cool. It's something that happens quickly, but it's, you know, it's still not cool. Hit us up on Twitter at PassGreatPod. I'm at Alex J. Milton. Pat's at not Pat DN. Robert is at Robert Barbosa03. Use the hashtag PTG not cool. That's how we search for them. Hashtag PTG not cool to at Pass the Great Pod. This is the not cool segment. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not, not, cool. not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not i forgot to get gas before going to work and so that was just like like when you get in your car and you see it's on empty and usually i'm like if it's a i don't have a a long enough trip to work to where i can go if it's above the red it was on it wasn't below the red it was right on the red and i was like we're not risking this today buddy so i but it just it added like six minutes to my day by being like uh i'm not going right to work I have to go down, like, and I luckily have a gas station like down the street from me. But just when you get in your car and you're like, "Fuck, I gotta get gas," it's just one more chore you have on your way to work. That unless you plan for it, it just, it just like, it's never like e- it was. It was easy, and it, like I didn't miss anything. I wasn't late or anything like that. But it was just like, "Fuck, I gotta go get gas." It's always that's not cool because it's on me. It's on me because I should have just got gas earlier. I could have got it's... gas literally any other day over the weekend. And it's always. 
on a day where I'm leaving my house at the last possible second. Right. You don't get up early for it. Cause you're always like, like, and it's like, every time you're like, usually you're like, I'm just going to get up early. I didn't do that. I guess I thought on Friday, I was like, I'll just get it over the weekend. I'm going to drive somewhere. I, nope. I Ubered everywhere. Didn't. But it's just, it's worse for me too. Cause I'm the guy at, at work that likes to fuck with people when they're late. So I'm the guy that likes to like, Did you get like, right Oh, oh I, 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 I thought it was 10 o'clock. You're supposed to be here. Huh? Oh, it's, it's 10 14. So what happened? Strange? I'm that guy. So then this will happen and I'll be five, 10 minutes late. And they all go, Oh, I thought Ooh. you were supposed to be. <laughs> and I'm just like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. It's like a very minor, not cool. But when you get in the car and you're, you just see it's on E almost, you're like, damn it. There's a, now I have a chore on the way to work. And that happened to me on Monday and it, Minor inconvenience was able to get done, but yeah, sucked. It does suck. So those are my not cools this week. A few I'll run through real quick. My first one, actually, your your first not cool made me think about it, is just uh, Texans games. And it's that because of local TV rights when the Texans are on, another game can't be on. So that just nullifies one of my football viewing screens. Like, I have two cable boxes side by side in my living room because I'm a degenerate sports watcher and I don't give a shit. I'll pay the extra money. I got two screens so that I can watch two live games and then I stream through everything else. When the shitty ass Texans are on, they don't even get to touch the main screen. Texans go on the side screen with no sound Mm -hmm. and just NFL networks on the main one that's going to jump around between. And I, it just, it pisses me off. It fucking sucks. Yeah, that does suck. Uh, Especially because they're like not good now. It's not even a good game you're watching usually. Is, uh, you know, I said I got new shoes and uh, they're great. They're comfortable. I just need to get some insoles for them. So finally yesterday I went and bought insoles. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I just didn't put them in all yesterday. So that, <laughs> I still have them in the box. I was like, oh, I bought them so I can put them in and wear them today when I went to work. No, I'm a lazy piece. Nope. Shit. You should put yes. him in before tomorrow. No, I, I I definitely will before tomorrow. I just, I came home, started watching sports and fucking forgot because I'm a big, dumb idiot. Oh, it happens. It happens. Uh, the one that makes me the most infuriated more than anything else is I'm driving to work today and uh, I pull up to the light and there's a bunch of cars at the light. There's three lanes. I'm in the middle lane. The car in front of me is just sitting there with I, this is not an exaggeration at all. At least three SUV lengths between them and the car in front of them, dude. That's a big pet, man. That that is a huge. I want. Piece, I, bro. I, I I didn't. I wanted to just lay on the horn, but I was like, Pat, just let it go. And they're just sitting there. Why like does it bother seconds. us so much? Where it's like seventeen car lengths. They just like what? Like, like okay. Hey, well, what if I get hit, dude? Like, it's like, I guarantee you, you're not going to go the length of a football field if somebody rear ends you. Unless it's like, unless you think like a fucking train is going to come behind you. And I guarantee you, they don't have train tracks behind you. No, it's just them not paying attention at all, which is weird. Because I'm pretty sure they were either the second or the third car. So I like when it's the first car. And I like being able to get over and just cut in front of them. Like, I am now first at the light. Yeah, like you're an asshole and this is what you get. And I'll usually like if I see this happening, I will fucking and I'm not, go around I'm not them every get right on somebody's ass guy either. I understand. Like, oh, I will a, do there's that. A, no, there's like a perfect medium in like wh- how far back you should be. Oh, oh, oh! But you I should never you be if like they're doing this. It's never like four whole car lengths ever. Like it's no, you're never like that. Five six feet behind them or whatever the fuck it. I don't even know. It's a beta just, move. It's a beta it move to be like that in in a fucking in a fucking light. But I'm just right. sitting there, and I'm getting angrier, but I'm like, don't fucking honk at them. Just let them chill. It'll be fine. And then eventually they do move forward. Like, they're sitting there for, like, 20, 30 seconds. And then before the light even turns red, they're just like, I, I guess they were just like, look up and like, oh, oh, I've got 50 fucking feet before the car in front of me. And then they just, like, start to – but by the way, when they crawled forward, they still left, like, a over a full car length. And it was just uh, – but, like – I, I'm just like, oh my god! Like, how? How are you driving? Is so easy. People that are like, dude, driving's hard. I'm not a good driver. 
I don't get it. It's the easiest fucking shit. Do you have any idea how often I'm, I'll be driving and I'm so goddamn tired I'm almost falling asleep and I've never been in an accident because of that? No, I would. No, I would. But, like, it's driving is so easy. If you're a bad driver, you know, I'm just going to stop because I'm going to say something to piss off one of our viewers, and I don't want to alienate don't anybody. Say things but, like, like that. God, you're a piece of shit if you're a bad driver. Like, Scumbag uh, move. Scumbag move. It's just, it's so infuriating. And next time, yeah, I'm just going to lay move. on my horn. Because also, one day I hope somebody pulls a gun on me because I don't value my own life. And I can just be like, dude, you're pulling a gun on me because you're a bad driver. I want you to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you would be the guy that do it, pussy. Do it. And you're going to pull a gun on me. Fucking walk back. Because I honked at you because you were sitting in traffic with four car lengths in front of you. And somebody back there is going to miss the light because you just can't be bothered to pull forward. Like, fuck you. And then I'm going to get shot. And I'm gonna, my last words will be worth it. Yeah. Your last words would be like, what are you going to do, shoot me? And then they would shoot you. And they'd be like, well, his last words were, what are you going to do, shoot me? I guess we my, know the answer to that question. Oh, no, as I'm sitting there bleeding out, I'll probably be like, worth it, pussy. So fuck you, though. You still don't have to drive, bitch. Yeah. Solid not pools. So I feel cool. better after you know about that. John, I know John last week was hitting us up asking us like why we don't do like we should alternate not cool and cool segments. And it's like, I think like the gravian has enough cool stuff that happens. It's like we don't need to highlight just like I feel like it's braggy if you talk about cool stuff. Everybody has something that happens throughout the week that makes you say, dude, that's not cool. And this is like our way to kind of like vent. And I like, I enjoy when like you guys share your moment that makes you be like, dude, fuck this. And we're, then then it gets us hyped to like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Like. That's what the fun part of the not cool segment. This is going to sound kind of sad too, but I feel like somebody who asks for a cool segment is somebody with like a family and kids and positivity. My cool every week would just be like, oh, Packers look good. What else happened in your life? Nothing. I would just be like, I didn't kill myself. <laughs> Yours every week would be like, hey, uh, for some reason, Emma still likes me. And I'd be like, yeah, the yeah, Packers Emma's doing still good. With me. Emma's still with me. She didn't leave. And, we, and then I'd be like, any other good things happen in your life? I think absolutely not one. Nope. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> I got Wheezy. Wheezy's still hanging. Wheezy's pretty awesome. She did the pew pews yeah. this week. That was cool. Yeah. I still wake you up every day and I still pay bills. That was just, life sucks. It's easier to bitch than it is to like be constructive on anything or just, just more positive. fun and more entertaining. You know, else it's easier to do than just find positivity and everything. Actually, one of the, the positives that I would say would be Little M Air Fresheners, littlemshop.com in general. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. They got a little bit of everything. They also have our own. We got, we got our promo code now, PTG69 at checkout. You're going to get 10% off your order. They got free Bonk. shipping on orders of over $10 or more. If you They got the new, uh, they're magnets. It just says clean, dirty. If your dishes are dirty, all you got to do is leave it on dirty. That way you don't unload dirty dishes. If it's clean, then you can unload that's the dishwasher smart. and fill it back in. It is smart. They also have these, uh, these daily Dude, that's routine. That's perfect for like, seriously, for like scumbags like me who just don't, unpack their dishwasher well have you ever like you have you ever like thought it was clean and you unpacked a dirty dishwasher and you're like all these plates are sticky but now there's six of them that i've put already in oh no I can, I can tell pretty quickly but i'm also the kind of person that just uses but then you have to wash everything else that it touched at that point and then it's just no, like great now i have more dishes no but i mean like i've always been the kind of person that like i do the dishes but then I just use everything straight out of the dishwasher until it's empty and then I reload. Absolutely. And that, yeah, no, that's also if I did live by myself, that'd be how because it be. I because I don't have a Luckily, woman in my life to Emma tell me and she's not amazing. to do that. Yeah, that's see, that's what dumbasses like us need is a woman to be like, hey, that's my not queen. what adults do. She's amazing. That's not what adults do. Unpack it. And you're like, yes, ma'am. They also have a little uh when was the last time chart, is what it's called. And uh, I know we have one of those from Little Lim Shop. That's like, when it, when do I have to give Wheezy her heart, her heart room medication? When do I need to do this? When do I need to, you know, change the smoke batteries or whatever it is? And it's like last time, and it's just the date. And all you got to do, it's got a little dry erase marker that comes with it. It's awesome. And then, uh, yeah, little stuff like that. They got skincare routine stuff. They have makeup, 
mirrors for the ladies or for the dudes. We don't judge here. They got keychains. They got stickers. They got shirts that are awesome. They have cool little phrases in them. They like the pocket tees. They just don't have the pocket on them. But they, instead of where the pocket would be, it says a cool little phrase like always late. Don't talk to me. Just OK. Main character, millennial, pretty smart, tired, weird, all kinds of awesome stuff like that. And they are the softest shirts you're ever going to buy. And they have the best air fresheners ever go check them out little m shop.com little em shop.com give a follow on twitter and instagram on twitter they're at little em tweets instagram it's at little m shop little em shop little m shop.com little em shop.com make sure to use our promo code ptg69 at checkout you're gonna get 10 off your order little m shop.com the official sponsor of the answers segment that you can participate in by hitting us up with any question you have at all if it's a high thought something you thought of while drunk something like you want relationship advice hit your boys up and uh there's there's no such thing as a stupid question hit us up just stupid Pass people Gabe, don't say that at oh Pass god i feel like we haven't done that in months because you ruined it at at past gray pod oh, hashtag ptg that felt so good that's how we search for them hit us up there we also you can email them although uh we do check twitter way faster you're very way way way, way more likely to be featured on the podcast if you send it to us on twitter hashtag ptg answers just make like a throwaway account you can send us the questions that way uh hashtag ptg answers at past gray pod and then uh email us if you want at or uh answers at past gray pod.com here we go. This is the answers segment. Well, if you just answer the question, why don't you just answer the question? Be honest. No big deal. Yeah, answer. Answer the question. Don't change the subject. Just answer the fucking question. Yep, yep, right. Why, 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 our first answers question this week comes from our podcast son, Skylar Lester. <laughs> At OMG, it's Skyler. I actually saw his uh, his real parents out at the Rod Ryan Show charity car show this weekend. Um, I think he was out well, with his, with his, his lady. His birth parents, I would say, were his real parents. But we are know, his podcast semantics. Parents. He's their podcast son. But um, Skyler says, "Will the first manned mission to Mars become the world record for breaking the most world records, or will it be its own category of world records?" I don't you're gonna to have to explain i don't i don't understand this i read this earlier and i didn't understand it why okay, would it so be like, if you're going to mars that's not a world record is it like that's a that's a galactic record honestly like because outside of like when you're outside of the world like going to the moon is that a world record for going to the moon oh. if you land on the moon is that a moon record record like a lunar record or is that a galactic record because i think <laughs> Like whoever the first person is to live on Mars, that's a galactic record, is it not? Or a Mars record? I understand world now. Record. So to answer the first one, it would not be a world record for breaking the most world records because you're just breaking one record. You're going to Mars, and yeah, yeah, I guess technically each thing you do on that world is a new record. The first but, man to go to Mars, the first man in a spaceship to go to Mars, the first but, man on a Tuesday to go to Mars, the first man to go to Mars on a rocket with three blasters on it the first yeah, man to go to mars on an elon musk ship the first man to go to mars that also had kids the first man uh, the on. first gay man to go to mars like Do all you kinds of stuff any, like that There's, those are all those could all be world records at the same time you have time any idea do you have any idea how many records wayne gretzky holds a lot yeah wayne gretzky is the best uh i would i and, and no uh so I, i'm gonna say no it wouldn't be just because most of those categories don't actually uh, exist for world records. So I think it has to be under something that's already a world record in or on Earth. So it would be like, you can't just say first man to go to Mars on a Tuesday. Well, it's just, you're the first man to go to Mars because there's no first man to go to Earth on a but Tuesday. you're technically the first to do that. So that would be a world record. First, now, now, now you could say longest, if you set up a golf ball, longest golf ball hit on Mars. Man, that's a world record, but you have to do the activity. But the you have Mars to earn record. The record. Is, it, is it? But like, do, does like Jupiter have a different world record? No, no. That's you why do? you say on Mars. World record because on Mars on Earth. World records. It, it it says world, but we're more talking about humanity. Now that brings me to my next question. I have off of this question. It's eventually we're going to colonize Mars and live on Mars. I would imagine at some time, probably after we're dead. 
but like maybe our kids, kids, kids could do that or something. I don't know. I like, like at that point, does the Guinness book of world records become the Guinness book of worlds records where it's whatever, whatever world it is that you're in, that's the record for everybody. Like when I think they the just US, have a different section or I don't know, dude, like, cause then I think like world's records would make sense. Cause it would be like, well, it's Mars and the United States. Or world, that's, that's that's Mars and Earth, not just the United States. I, just, I, mean, I mean, the United States you know is what? basically the whole world, but. That is up to the beer company that randomly one day decided they were going to track world records. It's Guinness's call. I think it's got to change to world's <laughs> records. You ever think about how crazy that is that we trust all the world records to a bunch of drunk Irish dudes and chicks, ladies? Was that really Guinness? I don't. Are you no, sure? it's Guinness. It's Guinness. Like the beer company Guinness decided one day we're going to track world records and it's them. Now, like, it's not just like the brewers are in charge of it. Like, it's the overall company and it's a, it's its own branch and all that shit. But like, it's Guinness. <laughs> Somebody decided one day that they're like, oh, yeah, we'll respect the authority of Irishmen that make beer. <laughs> Why not? If anybody's yeah, gonna do it, sir. why would why why wouldn't you choose? Dude, the, the guy's name that started out, started it was named Sir U Beaver. It was almost huge beaver. Was I his mean, name? I would definitely call him huge. That's the guy that started it, dude. That's no joke, according to Wikipedia at least. But that is, I didn't think about that at all. That is pretty crazy. They're like, we're just gonna track it. Like, I mean. Uh, I I try I I I can't get in the world record books for the crawfish streak, which is at ninety one weeks now, by the way. Um, just because like they have to have somebody from Guinness there to document yeah. every single occasion, it's like oh they take That's it very bullshit. Seriously. Like okay, I mean I get it, but like it's not bullshit. That's not bullshit. I mean I'm within the range of it should it should be that I just didn't know to contact Guinness and be like I'm gonna go this far. Doing so, Alex, you know there's somebody in Coach O's family tree that's like, I've eaten crawfish every day of my life for 47 years. Nope. I don't believe him. Yes. Like, you're, I've if you went to Louisiana... I document it every single week when I eat my crawfish. There's a way you can go back and look at the documentation and you can see that it's accurate. If you went to Louisiana and said, my streak's at 91 weeks, they'd be like, dude, we don't been doing this for about 27 years now. I think I have the record. I, in far, until someone else tells me otherwise, I have the record. Please don't even try and come at me with that. But yeah, uh, I think what we're going to have going forward is it's going to just be world's records because it's like if it's the Mars records, like everybody's just going to go and it's like first person to fart on Mer Mars, like largest, like longest fart on Mars. Like those are gone. We're going to just redo all the, the world records we have on Earth. I think it's got to be world's records. Or does the first brewery on Mars just take up the mantle? Southern Star. The Southern Star World Records. Ooh, Southern Star needs you to start doing that. Whatever, like, what it, it doesn't have to be Guinness. It's just got to be whatever Southern Star records it does. Okay, let's talk to them because I want to I wanna set a record for a keg toss up at Southern Star and have it, like, be documented. And then other we'll people put the book start... together. They just got to give us the okay. We'll make the book and everything. But, can, can, guys, can we start a record book here? And be like, well, just whatever anybody Sony thinks Star up to, re to, world records. to do first, we'll get like a big book and you just write it down and somebody has to beat it. But one of the people who works there has to witness it. I love that. It has yep. to be official. Because yep. I want to do it. Hey, I've never hit us up. We'll work it out. This all stems from the fact that my uncle used to work for, uh, I get, we, they're big enough, Budweiser growing up. But it was before I drank. It was when I was young. And after they put all of us kids to sleep at night, all the aunts and uncles would get super drunk and the uncles would have keg tosses. I've never gotten to do a keg toss and I want to do one. I like Dude, that. Southern Star Olympics. Southern Star, Southern Star World Records. That'll be the competitor, I guess. I want to do a Southern Star Olympics. Keg toss, right, fastest I'm, beer show. We'll talk to Keith. They'll figure it out. Maybe we can do it at the Spooktacular or something like that. Um, all right. I did go through some emails because we haven't had email questions in like a month or two. Uh, Greg Baker writes in and says, if our TVs didn't exist, 
what would all of our, no no he didn't say if TVs didn't exist what would all of our furniture be pointed at oh dude they're pointed at each other yeah, like there's dude. still people that do this stuff it's just like couches like around all pointed to like a coffee table and they're all just facing each other it used to be people would just sit down and talk to each other without an external that stimuli miserable actually it, no what it would be is it would all be pointed at the gigantic radio in the corner because that's what people used to do before TVs. Right. And before, before that, before they TVs, would you point at the radio? But yeah, I think a lot of people still do. Like my grandma has like a sit, like, like a sitting room that doesn't have a TV in it, but all the furniture is just sitting facing rooms. Yeah. each other. And it's like, we just, I'm going to go in the corner room and watch football while you guys converse. It's weird. For hour number some, 10. I need something to fill the silence. I need something on. My, yeah, my brain makes too much noise. I'm not good I, alone. I don't like. I don't like having with my just, thoughts. I don't know what the longest conversation I've ever had with somebody one on one was, without us like watching something or doing something. Like me alone with down, my thoughts is not one on one talking to somebody. I don't think it's ever been more than five minutes of me just sitting and having a one on one conversation or with bringing up something you watched on TV. Unless it was a teacher being like, why are you doing this? You need to stop, blah, blah, blah. Like TV Even those don't usually last. They don't last over five minutes. They're just like, Pat, you're in trouble. You're doing this. I'm like, yeah, sorry, my bad. But yeah, um, if we didn't have TVs, furniture would just be pointed at other furniture. It's a good question, Greg. Uh, um, what a Josh, horrifying thought. It is terrifying. Josh Tree Coddle at Joshua Tree 713. Again, he's weighing in today. He says... Dogs understand words that we say, but we don't understand dog barks. Are dogs smarter than us? Well, yes. I would say most yes. most dog Actually, no. barks are the same yes. thing, but you you know sometimes your dog will have a different bark for different things. Right. So we do but, understand that. I Is mean, your dog barking because the, they have I to got... pee? Are they barking because they see something? You can sometimes tell the different barks between your dogs. But other than the I got your nose trick. I, no one's ever thrown a ball or pretended to throw a ball and faked me out like 12 times in a row. I have faked my dog out 12 times in a row pretending to throw a ball that I do eventually throw because I'm not a monster. But like, I don't know. That's that's a dumb move. Our dogs are dumber than us. Like they do understand our words. Wheezy even like specifically B-A-L-L that I just said that she didn't give me any reaction to like earlier today she popped up when i said that it was like huh that's my favorite word i know what that means and it's like she doesn't understand that but she can't just be like, woof and i'm like that means intruder like i don't i i so yes in a in a, in a sense dogs are smarter than us yeah but i, I think and you're I'm just dumb, so yes most dogs are probably smarter than now us. that you think about it though you could probably like there are times when we see barks at something and you know what she's barking about like some dogs have different barks yeah, usually it's like my neighbors keying into their like they're they're unlocking their door and it's like rah, 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 or they're doing the, laundry and they close the door in the laundry room. It's and like it's not a, all dog, but there's context uh, context clues to go with the barks. Like, oh, they're barking at the front doors. They want to go out, or they're right. staring in my face, barking in my face. Like, oh, he or she really needs to go poo. Or needs my to go boxer outside. Felicia used to like when she had to go outside. She would always go and uh, she would like look at you and then she'd lower her head down. And I was like, oh, somebody's got to go out. But that was how she, she didn't bark at me, but I could just tell from body language and stuff. Like they that. just give you that like the grumble bark? Oh, yeah. We get up. She wants to throw something a lot of times. Yeah, but, um, we we understand their barks better than you think. We just don't have words. I would say we're smarter than dogs, but dogs are better than us. Oh, without a doubt, a hundred percent. I wish dogs were smarter than us. It'd be a better world. Yeah, it would be. That's a, good, that's a great question, Josh. Um, Javier Perez at Silky's underscore man on Twitter weighs in with our next question. He says, for the rest of your life, would you rather fight a chimpanzee once a year with a sword of your choosing or fight a chicken every time you open your car door? I thought we had covered this already, or maybe I just talked about this with somebody before. I don't know. I've not heard this. 
I I hate to say it, but I think I'm taking the chimpanzee just because of how inconvenient it would be to fight a chicken every time. I think like because I could, st- yeah, you could like stab a chimpanzee with a sword. I mean, just fight one chicken every time you open your car door. I I think I could kick the shit out of a chicken. But dude, every, you, you wake up in the morning, you go out, you get in your car, you drive to work, you get to work, and a chicken attacks you. The second you get to work, Dude, but I have or, shoes. Or God, I would or, kick the shit out of the chicken. I think I'd fight the chicken, chickens, and there would just be can, a weird they, thing. You they can to, jump up high. Story starter. Dude, you have to kill a living thing every time you open your car door. You no, get out to get gas. you don't have to kill it. You just have to win the fight. And if I kick it across the fucking parking lot, that's winning the fight. Chickens can jump up and claw at your face and shit, though, too, man. It gets exhausting. Think about the amount of times you open your car door and then you have to fight an animal that's attacking you. Regardless of if it's a chicken. Chickens can scratch and all that shit too. Chickens can jump high and get at your face. Like it's chimpanzees are sneaky though, bro. I just want to hug a chicken. They are, but I want to fight it. But I trust me, I would much rather just kill a chicken every time. But what I get if you out didn't know? Door. You wouldn't like what if you didn't know? Like I think, if I know and, every time I get out of my car. I'm going to have to fight a chicken. I'm ready for it, I feel like. If you don't know, like, you know one time a year you get to fight a chimpanzee, like until that happens, and then you know like the rest of the year can go by without you having to fight the chimpanzee, you're always going to wonder, like, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? And like, I no, like knowing I just got to get out and kick the shit out of a chicken when I get out of here. I think if I have a sword, the chimpanzee, they're fast and they're very strong. But like, if I have a sword and it's, like as soon as it charges me, I'm just pointing the pointy end at it, and it's gonna go right through it, but and kill it pretty quickly. I think I can take a chimpanzee with a sword. It's just the inconvenient factor of having to fight a chicken every time. Now, if you, because I'm assuming this is a scheduled fight with the chimpanzee. I'd like to think that it's like you don't know when you just gotta like sometimes. Oh if, no, no! If you don't know. It just randomly, you look to your left and you see a sword there, and you're like, "Oh fuck, I gotta grab this because the chimpanzee." Oh god, it's about second. to go down. No, like if you don't know when the chimpanzee's attacking, you take the you take the chicken and you just carry a bat with you everywhere. This is you where go. we really need Robert in on this podcast because Robert would have the tiebreaker. I think we're gonna dis- we're gonna agree to disagree on this one because I think I, I know I could take a chicken. I know I could take a chicken every single time. You know what? I'll go chicken too, just because at least then I'm getting exercise, and I really don't want to kill a chimpanzee. Because at a certain point, either, you're gonna get annoyed and, with it, and, and you're just gonna. It's like in in Walking Dead. After a while, like when they started fighting zombies, they just kind of like had us like we just stab it in the head, just push something into its head, kill it, it's over with. After a while, like when you know every time I open my car door, I'm gonna have to do this. You just start grabbing their necks and you just slam it down on the fucking pavement, and you're like, all right, you're dead, done. Like, I would just carry like, a bat. It with would be gross. Everywhere. It would be like I don't want to do that, but I think that would be easier than always wondering if I'm going to have to fight a chimpanzee. Think about it this way, though, Alex. Are you in charge of disposing of the chicken body? Because your no, apartment you just complex, fight it. I think you just got to. Your it. apartment complex is going to be very a- angry at you at the amount of dead chickens down in the. I got a dumpster. Garage. You just toss that bad boy in the dumpster. Done. So you are in charge of disposing the chicken. Well, I will if it was my apartment. I would. I would. You get out of work. And you're going to walk in every day and put a dead chicken in the trash. Man, the chicken like, attacked was, me, bro. The chicken attacked me. I don't know what you want. Or I mean, I, spin zone, I have fried chicken I want anytime ever. Well, then you got to clean the chicken again. I would like to think that I But think of how good tell. you'd get if you got a free chicken every single day because you kick the shit out of a chicken anytime you open your car door. Hey, guys, we're starving. Watch this. Open the car well, door. I, I, I was going to say, you can, bam, you bam, can tell. Bam, let's all eat. You can tell a local shelter, be like, listen, every day, if you just meet me at work in the morning, I'll have a chicken for you. I'll kick it to you. And like, I'm going to kill it. And then you just take it and clean it and cook it and do all that you want. I'm sure the guys at work would like me. I mean, hey, guys, like, I know it's a pain. You so much money on chicken. If you want to clean and cook this chicken See, afterwards. That's a positive it's gonna, of it. I think it's you gonna have chicken on this. It's going to have broken bones all through it. But cleaning and cooking a chicken takes a while. I just think. I, I know I could take a chicken. I don't trust myself 100% against a chimpanzee, especially if you have the element of, like, I don't know when this is going down. But you do have a sword, but, like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, I'll I'll still go to And I'll just leave dead chickens. There. Like, that's what would suck is my HOA would hate me because there'd be dead chickens just literally. Yeah, hey, man, actually, I didn't ask to fight him. Actually, I didn't ask to fight him. I just am. 
actually there's cats that just run around my neighborhood. They're like my neighbor's cats, but they always chill underneath our cars. So like if I got home every day and killed a chicken and just left it there, those cats would be happy. They'd get real fat. They'll they'll eat dead chicken. Yeah. So it would work yeah. out perfectly. Chickens, chicken. just because Chickens also, over if you, chimpanzees. If you miss, and I don't want to fight a monkey. If you miss, it's not a monkey. Chimpanzees are different than monkeys. They're apes. Uh, if you miss with that first sword strike and that chimpanzee gets its hands on you, you're dying a very painful death. It's not going to be fun. Like rip It'll your rip off. your face off and just chimpanzees are fucking way stronger like, and I can us. close my eyes and just punch blindly at a chicken if it gets high enough up. You know, you just grab it by the neck and smash it down. Like, I can take a chicken every single day. Yeah. More times than not, I think I'd come out on top with that. I don't know what kind of about the chimpanzee. You, you just got to wear padded clothing Lots and of cover hoodies. your face. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great question, Javier. Good question. Great question. At Silky's underscore man on Twitter. Our final question comes from our buddy Nicholas in Iowa, who we have not heard from in a while, but he says, if you're having sex in a ladle filled with soup, does it become a brothel? Anything <laughs> only if you, you put pay- a handle on is a ladle. Only- it's a broth if you're having sex in a giant ladle filled with soup. What is you it? Have is it to- a brothel if you have the sex in it? You have to pay if you're paying for the sex, then yes, it is. You to pay for the sex. Okay. Yeah. If it's paid sex in a ladle full of soup, it's a brothel. It's a brothel. Okay. Open shot yeah. right there. I mean, I, I can't comp- I can't complain about that answer. It's a great answer, Pat. If you're just having a if you got a kink where you're fucking in a bathtub full of soup with a handle on it. You got a ladle, you got a ladle kink. That's just a kink. But if you if if it's a hooker or a call girl or call guy. Then, uh, okay, then it's a brothel. What would you call? Is it a call guy? Call boy? I think it would be a call guy. Call man? Call guy. See, see, that's just weird. It's call girl. Call dude. But but call boy sounds bad. Yeah. Let's start calling them call gals. No, it's call girl. You can't. We're too late in the game to change the name. Fair. Yeah. Fair enough. No. All right. All right. Well, hey, I felt good about this one. I felt good about this. Miss you, Bobby. Obviously. I didn't appreciate, yell at you. Appreciate you doing this, uh, th- doing this a day early, Pat. I'm really stoked to hang out with you tomorrow at the golf tournament, buddy. Yeah. This is gonna be a good one. It's gonna be I'm a good one. Up. Hey, thank you guys for listening to us. Give us a follow on Twitter at Pod at not Pat Dion. I'm at Alex J. Middleton at Robert Barbosa 3 uh, Please share us with a friend. Give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever else you listen to podcasts. Just tell your buddies, like, hey, subscribe to this podcast. It's dope. Go like our YouTube channel, Pass Gary Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe to that. Uh, it really helps us out with the amount of people that watch, like, the videos and stuff like that. Uh, if you're listening to us, only go and just, like, hit play on the YouTube video so it gives us some numbers. If you're watching, go hit play on the podcast so it gives us some numbers on that as well. We love you guys. Y'all are the best. Again, shout out to Kenya, Josh, Pat, everybody involved with the uh, the golf tournament for the gravy hole tomorrow. Bro Brad, shout out to him as well, specifically because he was the one that backs all of this. But uh, looking forward to hanging out with everybody at the golf tournament. And uh, until we talk to you guys next Wednesday, we'll be back at a regular schedule next Wednesday. We love you guys. And always remember to pass the gravy. You bitches! I want Someone to love me, I need Someone who needs me And it don't feel right when it's late at night And it's just me and my dreams, yeah, I want Someone to love me